and after a week break, we are back. Season 3, the first week here. We're starting off with Mind vs. Action on Apocalypse. Let's go game number 1. Soup Shun, what's going on, man? What's up, Sam? Yeah, just chilling, like a villain, watching some good StarCraft games with you, and I'm all happy about it. I think Africa TV has now officially changed his name to Soup. Soup? Nice. Yeah. How yeah. you been, anyway? I'm, I'm good, I'm good. It looks like we got a new sponsor, by the way, too. I think HMall is still technically the sponsor, but uh, they've got that big LG sign up now, so... Uh, that's exciting. LG, a huge company. Life's good, Sam. Life's good. Yeah, the the gaming lineup, I can't remember what it's called. LG. Um, I can't remember the, the exact moniker or the, the exact name for their gaming brand, but it's always great to see new sponsors for these big tournaments and it just means that the game is just very healthy right now that's that's the the signal that we should be taking from that absolutely just the fact that there's any kind of like interest and life being breathed into the scene and the game is a really good sign and i mean this first week is going to be insane we were just talking about the lineup earlier and how kind of badass the zerg lineup is looking right here soul key hero action absolutely insane of course right. Terran looking strong too royal light mind and then there's still yeah, best yeah, yeah. only person here who feels a little out of place is YSC, but Hudo, uh, he can pull out some good games as well, so still anybody's week here, week number one. Um, this should be a lot of fun, dude. I, I'm I'm always happy to be casting KCM, I and mean, it feels like a week break was too much. What do you feel? <laughs> yeah, no, I do feel the same way, saying I've, I've been looking forward to this, and uh, I'm really excited to see this lineup. Um, Soki Hero Action is an amazing Zerg lineup, probably the strongest out of the three, and the uh, Royal Light Mind is a, a bit of a favorite for me as well. I would love to see Mind being chosen. It is nice to see YC get some you know stage time and you know, chance to shine, so to speak. So we'll see what he can pull out. He is you know more than capable. It's just that compared to these other players, he's not quite at the same tier. I'm glad to see that uh, we're not having any lackluster uh, early lineups from Zerg. Last season, it was all about the Protoss lineup. Every single week was so stacked. Right. So glad they're giving some other chances to some other Protoss players as well. Um, already getting in here, seeing the um, build order here from Action, of course. Just a 12 pool or 12 hatch, excuse me, from him. And no punishment here for Mind. Mind just gonna no. go for the wall in at the front, and this is looking like a very normal game uh, to start out here, just macro style for both players. Yeah, I think I think he's going for 2.5 hatch and just a normal one rex uh, expand here from Mind. So pretty standard stuff so far. The eight rex meta has been so strong recently. A lot of Zerg players have been opening with the early pool, but in the end, this is the superior build. Having that quicker hatchery and the extra larva uh, and getting that you know, second hatch down in the main is, is just going to give you a much stronger mid game. It's all up to the Terran though. If they want to put on that early pressure, then things can get a little hairy. Mind here not relying on that though, not leaning on that build. And you know he's not going to get the advantage of having an early pool here from action and just that wall to defend. So uh, I think just completely even ground here no advantage either way and we'll see what mind wants to pull out here because i always from my perspective i'm always thinking that mind is going to be the one with the creativity he's going to be the one to pull right. something weird out action is probably going to play completely standard and just try to win in a late game with the filer play but mind is going to be the one trying to figure some way you might be right, especially especially with the fact that Action's playing super greedy. Like he didn't, he threw down his hatchery before Spire, squeezed out nothing but drones, and built his Spire super late. So this is like about as greedy of a 2.5 hatch as you can do. So it'll be probably, it might even just be like barely enough mewers to defend and harass a little bit for some turrets and nothing too crazy and not a full straight ahead mewer Camille going right up to 10. So we might even see like five mewers initially and then slowly adding on. 
So you think he's going to go for a, a quicker third hatch and possibly or a, a third base, excuse me. It yeah. looks like, I mean, he's sending a Ling over here to check the uh, center left. So that drone's probably going to be heading that direction here pretty soon. Um, only reason you'd be checking that is to make sure there's not like an SCV or a Marine just sitting and waiting back to block that, I think. Three racks follow up. It's going to be a full four racks uh, play here out of mine. That's going to give him a lot of pressure, but... If we see uh, a Hydroden, like you were saying, a uh, very low commitment to mutas and then straight into tech, that will right. work very well for action in this situation. Yeah, I think I buy enough time with the initial mutas and the speedlings just to kind of make mine play a little bit more cautiously and not probe for weakness early on, then he might be able to get away with that kind of like quick transition. Uh, as it stands, mine's going to, you know, want to force as many sunkens and mutas as possible. So we'll have to see if the timing of this 4x can be quick enough to punish uh, action here, but we'll have to see. Mutas are going to be made now. No sunken colonies have to be produced. Oh, an evolution chamber. Ooh. Over here at the, two okay. point, the, the, the third hatchery here. And this is indicating not complete like it's not a, a certain thing here but it's looking like a crazy zerg build from action yeah, yeah now this is kind of crazy zerg timing of making the evolution chamber as well so does indicate that so far doesn't mean it's for sure that but it's looking like that so he might just be trying to rely on mutiling for quite some time while getting a lot of carapus upgrades and trying to go straight into hive straight into ultralisk and try and get into a late game state as soon as possible here and he has forced a decent amount of turrets without that many mutilists committed and has bet he basically waited until he could make it seven at a time so he can come in and start one showing some SCVs because you need about six SCV kills to remain on economic curve with the Terran if you're going crazy so. well he's already got about three here two to three so far gonna just dip in and get a few more kills four turrets are able to fire though every time he flies in so not the greatest trade each time uh, he is coming around behind this army and forcing it back just a little bit here by threatening the supply depot good move by action who is building kind of a minimal number of units and no sunken colonies at the front actually might have added on a few sunken colonies now but he yeah. does still need to buy that time right yeah he's just he's thrown down like three or four sunkens just now and he's going to buy as much time he's going to dog the bible from behind he's a little bit slow on chasing this bible with these mutas he may get punished a little bit for that he needs to make sure he knows exactly where this bio is at all times and he's like lost a few seconds windows here and allowed mine to get on top of this high ground plateau now he's going to be warding away the mutas with half of his forces while the others secure the ramp so he can come down here unchallenged maybe even get the snipe on this queen since preventing the hive timing has got five sunkens on the way and morphing three are only completed right now but has got a whole stack of mutas to try and challenge this Mm, I wonder if that was the only Queen's Nest. Um, that would be a little bit unfortunate. Yeah, yeah there is no Queen's Nest. So, the Queen's Nest is going to be a little bit slow here. Another fly through to get as many SCVs as possible, but that's a lot of turrets. He's not really going to get too much damage here. Queen's Nest is going to start once again out there in the front. And I never really thought about this before, but imagine if that got sniped a second time, how late the actual Ultralisks would be at that point. Yeah. That might actually be a huge yeah. deal. Yeah, you'd be kind of forced to like play a, a lot more heavy into Mute Ling uh, as a result. You may have a lot of gas banked up, but it's going to be a bit awkward for you navigating that. Actually, he's doing quite a lot of damage with these Mutes, though. He has cleared out these two turrets on the north side of that mineral line, even getting the snipe on that medic there. If you can somehow just hold the four, he's got about five or six sunken. So if you can add on a couple more, and hopefully that Queen's Nest finishes just before it gets sniped again. Okay, he has, okay. He has can start the hive. That would be really a nightmare situation if he also lost the Queen's Nest again. But yeah, now yeah. action can go into Hive. He has a Guardian option as well now. He doesn't have to go into Ultralisks to win this game. He can finish with just Muta Guardian from here. And being able to harass this spot endlessly in the, the north part of the natural expansion is really critical as well because you can only make four Marines at a time and those can be dealt with easily. So mine's in a little bit of trouble right now if he can't break the front. I don't think he's going to be able to break this in action. I mean, it's been a while since we've seen this play out of him, but I've definitely seen action try stuff like this before where he just goes for two base and uh, just masses of mutas and eventual transition. Usually he would go for a lurker and uh, like a, a defiler transition, but here he's going into that ultralisk, which I haven't really seen before on two base. It doesn't seem like it should work. 
But mine's kind of played into his hands by coming out and, uh, you know, moving over to that front and allowing uh, action to take over this natural. Uh, the drone here just running around looking for a place to throw down a hatchery, but that marine is already on top of it. Another drone going to be sent out here. He will try to secure a third gas eventually, but uh, mind, I mean, he can just keep denying this forever, I think. Um, while action is continuing to de deny the natural, it's it's a, like a one base versus two base situation here uh, until mine really sets up these turrets once again and gets his irradiate online to deal with those mutas. Oh, he's going to get a cancel on this hatchery. Oh, he gets the kill. Oh, that's actually really huge. Action wasn't paying attention. Didn't realize there was two Marines worth of DPS on that hatchery. Maybe thought it was only one and didn't calculate the stim correctly. And now he's lost this hatchery. It's actually a little bit of a sticky situation. He has got this natural denied, but now there's two irradiates available to mind. He needs to have perfect mutalist split here if he loses too many of his oh he's taking quite a bit of damage does get the mutas split out but there is still another radiate to contend with does manage to fly away from the range of that is going to maybe survive for the time being but he's be very careful with these mutas is the only thing that's giving him the map control that he needs to get this third up right now 800 gas is the bank that actions managed to accumulate here he needs to spend some gas on that second and or uh, does he have plus, armor plus two already i'm not sure um he needs to spend on that armor plus two and he needs to get uh, ultralis carapace and also uh, ultralis speed so that's a lot of gas that'll have to be spent on just purely on upgrades it doesn't leave much left for ultras themselves there might only be you know three or four ultras popping out in the first wave and it'll be uh, relatively easy for mine to fight that if he has the bulk of marine city needs uh, to DPS those down. But quite a lot of Marines did get shaved off by the Mutilus Karask earlier, and we did deny mining for quite some time in that natural expansion. So relatively speaking, Mind is a little bit behind in where he should be, but he's still got quite a considerable force out on the map right now. And like you say, plus two Carapace isn't finished, needs to get those upgrades as well. So it will be some time before these Ultralists become super relevant. And by that time, Mind might have the critical mass that he needs to start focus firing those Ultralists down as well. So we might get this kill on the nine o'clock, keep action on two base, and actually might be able to get a win out of this. Yeah, this is why we don't see many players go for this style of play, the two base ultralisk. You just cannot make many units. You cannot make many ultras with this uh, style. You're spending so much money on upgrades, and then the number of ultras that pop out is pretty pitiful. So, I mean, action, he loses that base in the center left. He starts another one down at 6 o'clock. That's kind of his last ditch effort, his last hope here. But he needs to take a really good fight coming up soon and actually snipe a bunch of these science vessels as well, because Every time an ultralist gets irradiated, those armors, the armor is just not going to matter. They're going to take a ton of damage and get brutally softened up here. And there it is. Two irradiates go down already. These ultras are going to be very badly hurt before the fight even starts. Yeah, this is really rough. Probably one of the worst case scenarios for action now. He will survive with his units. The irradiate will not kill the ultralist as long as it's on full HP, but it still will soften them up a lot. And we do have the plus four carapace on the ultras now, but it's going to be a little bit tricky. Action's going to have to engage extremely um, f uh, with a lot of finesse here because he needs to somehow kill four vessels and not let the bio ball just like mow down his ultras one at a time so he's going to try and play a little bit of guerrilla warfare here kind of get around the back of this bio ball and cut off retreat and cut off uh, reinforcements and maybe see if he can bait the terran army to and fro in the middle of the map while he has to buy himself some time to build up some forces here because right now he doesn't even have the speed on his ultras yeah it doesn't have speed and uh, how many scourge does he actually have here to fight the science vessels oh he's got four he picks off two that's a great trade right there uh, although some of these ultras will die just straight up to the irradiates uh two irradiates will kill those so uh, this is really, really brutal right now. Almost every ultra that he's managed to put together has been irradiated. And the ones that haven't are just going to get trapped up here in the top right-hand corner. This is going to buy action wow. some time, but, I mean, he's got nowhere to run. 
Yeah, mine's playing like an exterminator right now, and he's being very methodical, and he's like finding the most efficient way to deal with these like pests on the map. And so far, action trying to sneak around with the mutiling on the left hand side and hide the ultralisks in the back pocket of the base. But mine's not a foolish man. He knows exactly that there's some ultralisks up in the corner somewhere. So he goes and tries to target those down. Pretty good trades on the ultralisks. Does kill one of them though, and that's a uh, it's, it's good enough for mine. He's already thinning out the herd, so to speak. But needs to be careful not to lose too many of these pockets of marines like this because he needs a critical mass of marines to keep fighting these ultralisks so action can run away with the game if the vessels or the count of ultras gets out of hand um for either side so both players are going to be desperately trying to snipe the ultras and the vessels as much as they can right now vessels going down but so are the ultralisks and right now this is favoring mind until this third base is mining gas which is just only now starting yeah we're running out of units here one more ultra gonna pop out but this is just a a, a real sign of the times here for action he just doesn't have the gas to continue to produce and now he's going to lose a bunch of overlords here completely supply block even that 200 gas that he's managed to accumulate can't be spent right now on any sort of unit that he could possibly need and i mean he's sitting here on two bases still 15 minutes in we're on two bases it's not a winning situation for zerg in any sense of the word no, this is a pretty dire for action here. He's supply blocked. He can't mine his third gas. He's going to pump three ultras a minute here with that 600 gas a minute. And he needs to make scourge on top of those ultras. So he can't even get that amount of ultras out. So yeah, pretty much everything is going wrong for action. The only thing that's going for him is that mine doesn't have a third base up yet. But it doesn't really matter. Like with the Sim City of the natural, it works better against the ultras. As you can see here, it's much harder to come in here with the ultras and get something done because the Marines are kind of like body blocking them up and they can't even get in there. So yeah, unfortunately, uh, this actually really favors mine this current game state so he can kind of just keep action contained on two base as long as possible keep denying this third if possible and with the upgrades getting closer and closer to plus three weapons for um, mind here it will be not that, that long before he can keep challenging these ultras because they, they have got their plus five armor right now but in about 30 seconds mine's gonna be finishing his plus one weapons i think I don't know how action justified getting that third armor upgrade. <laughs> I mean, we've got almost no gas at all, and it just finished now. This is after the point where uh, the, the shoe has already kind of dropped here, right? Like, even if we uh, take a fight now um, and get our third base up, I really feel like action is completely in the driver's seat. Five ultras going to come up here taking... A uh, pretty good trade, but no lings to support them. Pretty much nothing here uh, to help out with the ultras, aside from a few scourge, and the scourge just get gunned down. The science vessels survive. A few more lings and ultras pop out, but again, dire situation here for mind, and the vessel count is just continuing to grow. He's going to have so many radiates, one for each ultra, and we're going to probably see D Matrix get thrown down here shortly as well. Yeah, absolutely. And plus three weapons kicked in just at the tail end of that fight, so he's trading even more effectively. And no, no Kaiser Blades upgrade for the ultras, so it's taking three chomps to kill a Marine if there's a medic healing it. So really inefficient trades here for action so far action looking for that miracle engagement but this is not the composition for miracles this is like a mathematics comp uh, composition if you've got enough then you can chomp through the marine forces but you know there's no spines here there's no miracle plague that can happen it's just a numbers game and the numbers are not in the favor of action here. He taps out GG, and our first game goes to Terran. On to game two here. YSC going to come out against Mind. Retro is the map. Let's see what Huro can do. Well, I, I really do like Hero, so I hope he does perform well as one of my... Uh favorite players if he can perform better in action later on but so far we got YSC going up against mind in game number two and I'm hoping YSC can perform um, he's probably the weakest player in all three of these lineups but he's capable still every pro game is a very capable they're just not quite on the same echelon so might see do you think do you think carriers is going to be the option here for YSC like sort of three base carrier play maybe yeah it's potential it's possible uh, i think it's pretty strong here on this map um there's not a huge number of bases that you can take here and there's quite a bit of like uh, empty space over the 12 6 
Um, three and nine that you can kind of hang out and, and just kind of punish those spaces. It's hard to get Goliath up those ramps to defend those spaces. So I think it's a potential here, but we are in vertical spawns, which makes the push potential from Terran uh, pretty strong. You can come uh, straight down through that base in the center right and directly up to the natural here very very quickly like it's not a long rush distance here on this map so we'll see how that affects this matchup yeah i think with these spawns like you'd have to be really sneaky about getting carriers i think if mind identified that he, he wouldn't have too much issue with dispatching the timing at all yeah mind is um not one to get the wolf pulled over his eyes. He's not one of those guys who's gonna, you know, suddenly get surprised by a carrier transition. Most likely, he'll be scouting you properly, using his uh, com sats efficiently to figure out what's going on here with the Protoss player. Um, generally, when I see mine go down, it's it's less about mind games and more about uh, just overall macro and, and taking the fights properly with good micro. He usually doesn't end up getting tricked and faked out. Yeah, a little bit of a game of tag here with this probe and SCV. Um, keep running back and forth, chasing after each other, mind showing that he's on top of his multitasking there and not going to be taking too much hit, any, uh, hits on that uh, SUV. And uh, looks like we're going to be considering a, a, a fast third here if uh, we, we, we stay on this, this trajectory from um, YSC. If he throws down a second gate or goes like fast tech, maybe not, but so far it looks like without any early zealot, he might be wanting to take a fairly fast third base here. Yeah, it looks like he hasn't scouted the Terran just yet. So he's going to be keeping his Dragoon back at home. Just being nice and careful here, making sure that there's, uh, you know, nothing coming in, no Vulture or uh, Marines coming to attack him. He's just waiting for that probe to eventually figure out what's going on on this map. And usually when you go with a build like this, you just immediately send the Dragoon out and you don't even scout with the probe, but... Interestingly, YSE didn't scout early with the probe. He waited for the Dragoon to come out, and then he sent the probe. Um, right. Kind of different. He's really focused on making sure that this SCV doesn't get in. And now he's going to chase the probe as the second Dragoon comes out. Uh, what is he hiding behind this? What is he What is he trying to mask here from mind? Well, he, I mean, there's so many things that Protoss can be doing early on. Like, this could even just be a straight up, like, five, five minute, ten um, DT if he didn't know about the Nexus and the Natural and this kind of thing. So, um, he's probably thinking, like, this is going to be, like, some kind of, like, six minute robo timing. So, he wants to come out with, like, a, you know, standard fake double push and maybe get some damage on Punish a little bit here. Delay the third as quick as much as possible. Mine's aware of the many variations, though. So, he's, like, kind of hedging his bets and, like, you know, ticking all the boxes. So, he's going to be setting up his mines at six while also putting on a little bit of pressure here just in case. This is a common push here with the four marines and a couple of vultures coming out. I actually casted a game today uh, in the race battle for BSL. It's a uh, very similar format to this tournament um, for foreign players. And it, Artosis actually did the exact same push, just a probing push. Figure out what your opponent is doing. Check how many dragoons there are. Um, we don't even see a commitment here for mine. He just places mines and backs away. But you can absolutely go into the natural, just kind of poke, see what's going on, and get some more information about what's coming since you didn't get that SCV in to scout. Yeah, this pressure from mine is basically forcing a second gate out of um, YSC in like a six minute um, third timing rather than a five minute third timing. So it like slows down the Protoss by a whole minute. It does kind of force them into heavier Dragoon production. But um, it, I, I think overall this is like really favorable for mine. Like slowing down the third this much, uh, it puts him in a very comfortable position going into the mid game. Just standard smart stuff here from mine so far, YSC. He's going to be drawing down that nexus as you were saying, just getting himself into a good position. But I feel like we need something special here out of YC. What is his tech going to be? How is he going to uh, outdo mind here in this game? Is he going to go into like early storm? Is he going to uh, get reavers or 
quick speed shuttle. It seems like he just wants... Okay, I, I thought that this was going to be something else, but we actually have the robotic support bay, and there will be Reavers out shortly. I'm curious to see if uh, YSC has a level of control to compete with Mind here. Yeah, I'm interested to see that as well. Ooh, almost getting out with these vultures. Not quite, though. Not enough hit points on those to get out with one. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this is interesting. Uh, mine, mine confirms the third base timing without having his comms sets ready, so he doesn't even need to make double comms set right away if he doesn't want to. He can make one comms set at a time. I think he's pretty confident about the build order choice. I think he knows it's two gate ops into third into Reavers. I think he's pretty well aware of that, even though he hasn't got comms sets yet. And he's going to be going um, into heavy factory count now, right around about 7 minutes 20, which will give him like a really strong 5 factory timing to do anything he wants pretty much. He'll, he'll survive any pressure from YSC if there was some kind of committal, and he'll also be able to um, you know, put on some pressure of his own if, if, if he stays a little bit greedy and goes tech heavy here and also goes straight into carries or something, which he won't. Um, so yeah, I really like this from mind, and you don't have to attack with the five factory as well. You can just basically like you know build a lot of units and then just take your third base. I wonder if this is going to be the four Goliath five factory timing attack. Um, probably because we I, I actually saw this exact play today from Artosis, which is kind of yeah, hilarious. He he actually he managed to pull apart mist uh, mist with this play, um, and it it really does work fantastically well, right? The reaver is there to kind of slow you down, and you, if you just get barely in range with those ranged goliaths you take two volleys to pick off the shuttle and then you can clear out the reavers man it is it is tough here with the delayed third to have enough ground army uh, after the reavers are gone to hold on against that five factory play yeah there it is four goliaths here we go yeah, I mean, you, as, as the Protoss player, there is still some ability to, to deal with this. You can, say, for example, like try and snipe the Goliaths with some carefully placed Scarab shots if you're on top of things. And if you can get that count down a little bit, make it a little oh! bit harder for me. Oh, he's just going to lose the shuttle. <gasps> oh, not like this. Oh, this is worst case scenario for YSC without all these Dragoons also dying for free here. He's going to try and slow down the army with the Dragoons, but I do not think this will be sufficient anymore. That's just like really put him in a hole right now. Oh my gosh, YSC. I mean, this is <laughs> this is really bad right now. Um, this, is, this is about the point on ladder where the enemy types Naga tells you to get the heck out. This is bad. <laughs> Bad yeah, situation really here. Why is he going to... Like, yeah. Okay, this is like flying into your the, the, the opponent's base of your Mutalisk and just forgetting that they should have turrets at this point. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, mm. what are we doing here? Like, I mean, you know that this is... This could be five factory Goliath and he could have four Goliaths just chilling at his rally point right there. Like, we need to be looking at the shuttle when it's flying into the natural. I, I, yeah, I'm really confused about why I see uh, play that. Maybe he's just nervous, you know? Not mm. quite as experienced and cool-headed as some of these other guys. And I think that's the, the main issue why you don't see them as often is because it's not so much that their skill isn't there it's more that they, they can't perform at their usual skill while in high pressure situations like this uh, YSC kind of falling apart right now he's doing it the best that he can to uh, take a good fight here with the dragoons but the big siege comes up he pushes everything back another um, shuttle is going to pop out here dragoons are flanking this which is pretty decent. I mean, he's going to get two kills, two tanks picked off, but we're closing in on the natural here. We've still got, uh, you know, four Goliaths ready to go. He could snipe this uh, shuttle once again, and the position is just way too good here. One Scarab shot does get off. Um, okay, that uh, Reaver took a little bit of time, but the mine's doing so much damage here. Good pull, good drag, and he will clear this. Look at that. He does manage to hold this off. This is crazy. Like, like him losing that shuttle and Reavers, like, kind of like triggered Mind into doing this like hail mary push to try and really like tighten the noose around him. But yeah, YC's navigated this pretty well. Decent enough unit control with that pincer attack, clearing up the Terran contain, and Mind's got a third base going on the way. But behind this, but the supplies are looking a little bit more normal than they were a moment ago. Before it was like uh, YC was only 10 supply ahead after that dramatic loss of the shuttle, and now he's back to being like 20, almost 30 supply ahead. So this is looking 
um, a bit more stabilized of a position. So I think I wouldn't say necessarily that he's ahead or anything, but I certainly think like YSC has kind of negated that that bit of a, that issue that he created for himself there. So I think so far so good for YSC after that bit of a disaster earlier on. Oh man, yeah, this is surprising for sure did mind overextend um by you know pushing forward too quickly he was adding on more uh factories to make that push uh work with seven factory but he didn't really wait until those started to kick in and actually pump out units he kind of went ahead of himself and might have put himself into a rough position here where he probably should have been able to just straight up win after picking off that, those really, really important units. Now, YSC can't take anything away from him here. He took a bad situation. He's made it into a, a very playable one. He's still being kind of denied map access right now. He, he hasn't been able to get out into the middle and clear out all of those mines that are placed all around. Um, so he can't, definitely can't get down to the bottom left. Maybe he's actually sending a probe down there with a shuttle. Um, that's potentially possible. Drops a zealot. Um, does he have a probe in here? I think he might. Yeah, he's yeah, just going to drop the probe and build a nexus. Pretty smart play here from YSE. Yeah, I, I like I like it when players take the matters into their own hands and come up with like new solutions to age-old problems. Like so many players would just be like, "Oh, I can't send a probe to expand because there's a vulture out on the map and it will just always die." And they just wait to clear the vulture out and the mines out. But really, reality is, if you've got a shuttle with reavers already, just utilize the shuttle and use the reaver in the shuttle to deny the vulture, killing the probe as well. Uh, yeah, I, I really like that uh, forward thinking from uh, Wesley. It's going to allow him to get this nexus here. He does still want to clear out those mines, though. It needs access here to the middle of the map. Otherwise, the mine could just pull up over here and set up right in front of that natural opening. So, sending out just single zealots right now. I guess there's a lack of observers at the moment for YSC. But here comes a big drop into the natural. Reaver here could get huge damage, although it is going to get caught on the... Uh, Comsat the there. Damn, that was rough. The Comsat really blocking that as well. Yeah. Yeah, looking for this big hit. Can he get some real damage here? He's only got one kill on this. There we go. He gets two more. But only uh, two Reavers and that many Zealots plus two Shuttles. And he only gets two SCV kills. Man, this is not worth it. Yeah, and he's going to lose the, the um, shuttle as well because he wasn't quick to run away. So this is pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, one of the worst case scenarios you could have hoped for with that drop just not going splat right away. <sighs> this is really uh, rough for YSC. Like, he, he's kind of got, like, the pieces in the right place, but he's not able to, like, fit the puzzles, the puzzle pieces together accurately enough. And he's kind of, like, trying to make them squash and, like, you know, mold to the puzzles to make them fit, but it's not quite looking good, you know? Like, the whole picture doesn't quite work. Well, dropping Reavers and killing SCVs, it does take a certain amount of finesse. He's going to go for uh, Templar, though, and that's something that you just can't really mess up. Drop the Templar, press T, click the mineral line. You should be able to get a few kills at least. Uh, but yeah. will he be able to dive into the natural again? There's a lot of turrets there, plus the floating racks. I feel like uh, we're just about uh, tied up tight here for mine. It's going to be very hard to get any economic damage now. It, it looked like mine had a vulture on hold position between the Comsa and the mineral and drilled his SEVs to the bottom. So, like, it was almost guaranteed to, like, glitch out the scarab. So, it looked almost intentional for mines to avoid that scarab there, with the, what the first one that did it. That would be insane. Uh, I've never seen something like that before, but that that does sound like something that Mind would do. Um, something that he would actually figure out. Uh, just a small way to take an advantage um, and you know negate some of the potential value out of the Protoss army. Now, bringing a drop around the outside. This is interesting. Why is he killing his own uh, pylon? Oh, is it blocking the Nexus? Blocking. I guess yeah, it is. the bottom right hex, yeah. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately it is. A little bit annoying there to slow down his uh, Nexus even more, but if he does get this base online, he's, he's doing pretty good for himself. He, he can slow down the Terran's own expansion rate, keep him on three base for some time. Mind also can expand to the center of the map. Look at this storm drop here at the natural expansion of Mind. Does not 
lose too many SCVs, but that's, that third storm, though, does get the exit kill on four additional SCVs. So that was a decent trade there. Much more SCVs went down than last time, so a little bit of width in the sails for YSC. Not quite what he would like at this stage in the game, but he's doing something. Or my now starting to become maxed out on these three bases. We'll be wanting to do a big push soon, or at least to try and secure an additional base right now. Maybe taking the center of the board, I think. Yeah, he's going to shove forward here, and this is a big, scary army. YSC has max supply, but he's not going to trade well with the army units he's gathered. He just threw away all of his storm, and he's going to throw it away again. I'm not sure I agree with this choice. Oh, the mine there, wow. denying the two storms, and now he doesn't have splash damage to deal with the army. He just lost a ton of goons here to just, I mean, just walking into this army from mind dude it's so much has gone down here he stormed all the vultures and now it's just tank goliath and he's making lots of zealots so if he can like survive just for a moment here and get a lot of zealots out maybe he can overwhelm this army there's not a lot of vultures left coming out yeah maybe um he will be able to replenish that vulture number pretty quickly but yeah there may be an opportunity here to dive in um, before that the reinforcement wave shows up here. Uh, do we have any gateways down in bottom left? It looks like we might have like two or three. Yeah. Um, the uh, cannon luckily is actually in range of this. And a counterattack is going to come through potentially. YSC wants to push over here towards the natural rather than try to uh, break this attack. Will this be worth it here? Dropping on top of everything, but there's two turrets hitting his shuttles here and there are, a lot of them are going to go down whoa a great storm there nine kills on that templar doing a big chunk of damage and he's actually forced mine to come home yeah mine's in like forward treatment he tried to do a tank push here at six but look at yc he's actually ready with the defense on that as well so he has shut down the, the the split tank push at six and bottom left trying to do a lot of damage morphing some archons going to be cycling the zealots into the main base now trying to get on top of some of the production in there just keeping mine distracted and back and keeping his army in retreat mode right now while he's got time to stabilize and pump out more units from these gateways and with the gateway set up in the bottom left he can also make high templars down there to storm from the high ground a lot harder for terran to attack in these positions has got some science vessels available to him for the emps to try and like you know mitigate some of that storm potential but so far like this is looking like a, a, a playable game here for yrc going forward but the supplies are looking like it's still mine favored right now yeah, mine. He's lost a lot of SCVs. He won't be maxing out as quickly. But right now, he's got a pretty big army. He sent a lot of that home to deal with the counterattack. Oh, is he going to get any more storms here? Just barely able. Oh, great dodge. Really sick dodge there. Wow. Unless that Templar will be picked off. But, uh, I'm really impressed by Mine's ability to not lose too many SCVs to the crazy pressure from where I see this game. He's done so many tricks to not lose too many SCVs. Yeah, he's done a great job hanging on to that economy. Here is YC though, coming in once again, uh, right up into the natural. He's done this like four times already, and he's going to drop another couple of Storm Boys here. Oh my god, 15 kills total with those two Templar. Uh, the attack coming into the natural. Can he just hold things back a little bit longer here? We'll wait for a few more rounds of units because mind is actually dropped below 100 supply. If he just manages to increment out a few more groups of zealots, he might be able to break this and take this game. Yeah, he's he's got this the contain kind of set up right now, but he hasn't he needs a lot more units to get the job done. If if YC can buy enough time, he's just gonna evacuate the natural expansion. It's already mined out actually, so this is pretty much timed perfect for YC. He can just sacrifice this natural expansion now and slow down the push as much as possible and keep being uh, efficient with like bombing the tanks with zealots and just trading out storms from the high ground and really trying to get the maximum potential out of every tiny drop of units that he's squeezing out. Mind is on three three upgrades to two one or 2-2 two, two, I think of um, YSC right now so slightly mine favored uh, quite significantly in the upgrades but so far the supplies are 50 in advantage of YSC does have a lot of probes out on the map so um, relatively speaking he needs to come he's gonna do a great job of busting out on the right hand side though saying I think that YSC actually might break out and he's doing another storm drop on these uh, other tanks on this other and he with the goons hitting from the high ground and the pincer he actually might clear all of this up yeah he is gonna clear all this and mind wasn't even able to kill the six o'clock Nexus, unfortunately. GG is called YSC. The wow. comeback here. We almost counted him out. I mean, yeah. that was uh, 
such a rough start, losing to Shuttle immediately. But somehow, YSC able to bring that one back. I am kind of stunned here that Mind allowed that to happen. That is craziness, but YSC definitely showing his class uh, to everyone, all the viewers here. His potential is clear. This man has some serious good control in Protoss versus Terran. Bringing that one back and putting Protoss on the board. Next up, Hero versus YSE. Now, the uh, former name of YSE was actually Hudo. What I was saying before, Hudo sounds very, very similar to Hero. Yeah. Glad he changed his name here. Otherwise, it might get pretty confusing in this guest. <laughs> yeah, let's just call him YSC and Hero. I think that's, uh, that's, that's the best, for sure. <laughs> that was going to be really confusing. Well... Cross map here. What? Which? Which map is this? Is this is a new one of the new maps. No. Oh, this is this is this is right, 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 right. This is um. I can't even remember the name of it right now. That uh, Radeon. That's the one. Yeah. AMD map. Gotcha. With the nice little logo in the center, and the name of the map being themed after the brand, one of the product lines, Radeon, the graphics card. I'm really excited to see those new maps. Um, haven't been set in stone just yet. Not sure exactly which of the the brand new maps are gonna come through, but are gonna be chosen for ASL 18. But as soon as they do make that choice, I think. We'll probably see the KCM switch over to that new map pool. We'll have some uh, some fresh spaces to to play out these games on. I I mean, there's a lot of crazy maps in that pool. Have you have you seen it yet? Chun? Yeah, I've seen them. There's some of them I'm like really not sold on, but I'm sure they're subject to change as well. We might see a lot of changes to those before they do get picked in the map pool. But we'll have to see exactly how those pan out. Um, there's, only like, there's only like two or three of them. I'd be like really curious to see how games play out on them. The rest I'm not that interested in. But uh, I'm sure that the, the people choosing the maps for the pool will also feel the same and will probably get the best of the pool. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, nine pool here. Or, um, sorry, over pool here from Hero. And uh, gonna try and delay here. YSC ha got lucky with the cross map spawn but he may have to pull probes to save this cannon the cannon went down uh, a little bit late here because of the early nexus and he will get into this wall and yeah nice block here so far from YSC a lot of probes being pulled here a lot of probes being pulled to make sure that these links don't get in two probes go down but he will hold with this cannon Wow, look at how many probes he pulled. He pulled like 80% of his probes there. He was really respecting Hero. I think he pulled like maybe two or three too many, but he was, uh, yeah, really respecting Hero for some reason or just was really worried about anything going wrong there. Uh, even just one Ling or two Lings getting into the main base can be a, you know, task-switching nightmare in the early game. Having to deal with someone that's got high APM harassing your probe line with the two or three links in the main base can be disastrous. So making sure nothing went wrong was also good, but did, did mitigate some of the probe losses there, pulling the low HP one back and what have you. So didn't take too much damage despite the lost mining time. But Hero chugging away on three hatcheries has the option to throw down the Hydra Den if he is going to go for a 973 now, but he is. I think he's doing it. Really, cross map. We're gonna go for a hydralis bus. That's interesting. It's also a horizontal natural, so it's not the best. But there is a pretty far back cannon here. There's a lot of space to hit this uh, front wall, even if you don't have a range to pick that off. But first, zealot's gonna come out here. Let's see if uh, YSC can figure this out before the corsair comes, because we're definitely gonna hit before that that comes out and that earlier slowdown in the mining might actually affect the Corsair timing here. 
I, th I think that is the consideration here. Even though it's cross map and what have you, I think the fact that we got such a big uh, probe transfer from the YSC, we lost we lost so much mining time. So it does slow down the relative timing so much that even if it though it's cross map, even though it's nine seven three, even though it's not there's a vertical expansion opening, it doesn't matter because like as long as we could deny this probe scout, we're slipping out though. At least to make sure we can shut down any kind of scouting from identifying that this is nine seven three. But yeah, with those other factors considered, this this build will work regardless of the unoptimized optimized game state of, of being able to execute it so this can still really work in Heroes Favor and the fact that it is the, that current game state it might make it even harder for YSC to figure out this is what the follow up is going to be and it's always going to do like a, a, a full hatch hydra it looks like it's going to be a 976 hmm. the extra hatchery here I'm not sure how this maths out, but um, it's, it's because the probe. It, he's doing this as a transition purely because the probe can't be denied because there's no link speed on the way. Mm. So he just knows that the, it's going to be scouted. So he's just going to like make it seem like he, well, he wants him to see this fourth hatchery. So he's like, oh, okay, you're just making a few hydras because you're going to put on some fake hydra pressure. And now th this will tr double trick YC because he's making it look like he's doing a fake 973, but it was a legitimate 973 opening. He is still going to be committed. So YC's got to make two choices. Do I commit to the defense or do I assume it's a bluff? And he's going to be taking the wise choice of assume, you know, just making the defense. He could hedge his bets here and like cancel cannons at like um, 99 with like scouting with the Corsair, but because of the delayed timings for the, the minerals, like he actually can't really hedge his bets here. He has to commit to one or the other. And Looks like he will commit to the defense here. Four cannons going to finish up shortly. Uh, he still sees hydras coming across the map, so it's likely he'll continue to make cannons. But as soon as he sees these drones back here, I think he will be able to cancel. You know, four or five cannons should be enough. Uh, he will be having to add on additional uh, forges inside the main just to make sure that he gets these upgrades going. But uh, this is not like an unplayable situation here for either side. A transition is coming from Hero, and you know YSC here going to get an Overlord, and he will get that scouting information as well, knowing that he's not going to be getting all in right now. This is why I really like Hero oh, as a player. Oh, Hero like... got the he, he got the Corsair. He found it. Oh, he got it on the exit. Wow, he brought that's a big deal. He brought one Hydra back from the front and actually sniped it. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's nuts. But yeah, he's actually going five hatch, by the way. Like, he made a fifth hatch ages ago. So, like, he very quickly identified that this was going to be only a, a fake pressure and then transitions. Like, Hero, Hero can do so many different styles and so many variations at a very high level that it's very difficult to play against him as a pro player because he's so comfortable in doing whatever. Like, he can he can do four hatch Hydra and kill you, or if you if he won't kill you, he'll just transition into five hatch. And then, he's, he, no matter what, he's always going to be comfortable and happy to play his A game. So, he's not, like, one of those players which, like, he's, they're very good at playing, like, a few sets styles and that's kind of all they do and they like have a few variations of those styles and that's about it whereas heroes like kind of like a, a jack of all trades but also master of all trades gymnast here flexible with his play styles not going to be a box into one uh, play style here or the one mode of playing at zvp he is flexing his muscles here and moving towards that very high drone count like 60 or so drones here look at how many are in the natural i'm sure it's comparable in the main and third and the number of hydras we're going to see here in a moment is going to be insane why is he i mean he's been slowed down he's been forced to make cannons forced to remake forges to uh, restart upgrades here how many how much army is he going to have moving out to take this third and will hero just be able to deny that going forward I think so. I, I, uh, relatively speaking, it's not so much that Hero is going to make a lot of you. He will make a lot of units, but it, it's the relative timings of the Protoss. Because he slowed down that much, they lost mining time early on, that the fake Hydra bus um, forcing so many cannons, really slowing down his gateway count. All those things add up to Hero being able to kind of do whatever he wants. Oh, we do have a Dark Archon to try and counter this, this, mutant, this mutant transition, though. So there is a chance here for the Maelstrom to do something. But these mutants actually might just come into the main and just start harassing before the maelstrom is even close to being ready and the cannon's not finished in the main base critically saying he wasn't making really any uh corsairs at all by the way during this so wow. the cannon's gonna end up falling we've got a templar coming into the main base he's looking gonna look for a storm here but he can't storm while the mutas are right over top of these uh 
probes here. Otherwise, he's definitely going to lose that. Ah, the Dark Archon. He tried to pull it away, but it uh, ends up walking towards the Mutas. And it reveals itself. Now some Dragoons popping out here. So maybe he can stabilize. But he's already taken a lot of damage. And this is just going to slow down YSC that much more. Every single move that Hero is doing is not a kill move. But it's just buying time. It's just slowing down the Protoss. And eventually all those slowdowns are going to accumulate to a small enough army that he can just overwhelm with Hydra. Your hero's 30 supply ahead, which is insane wow. at this stage in the game. Yeah, that's nuts. Like, he's not only harassing at a high level, he's also um, macroing at a very high level here. And still playing at 400 APM, smashing out units from every lava, every hatchery has a, a fourth base as well. So, he, he, he'll only, yeah, he's going to add on hatcheries at the fourth base, do a drone transfer, and he's just going to go up to like um, seven to nine hatchery production, set up a massive contain. And as long as the contain is strong, um, he'll, 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 he'll then um, transition into like going hive but, and doing like late game stuff. But until then, he's just going to do nothing but macro. So we're going to see like everything poured into the strongest contain you've ever seen in your life. Yeah, lurkers may be coming here soon. The mutas are flying around everywhere, just making sure there's no units out on the map. We should see uh, overlords positioned all around this base here so that the moment YSC tries to send anything out by air, uh, it will be picked up on by Hero and chased down by these mutas. Ah, dude. YSC, could we see another comeback? I mean, this feels even worse than what he had versus mine, but um, well, I don't know. We'll see what the storms can be. Hero um, might actually let him come out onto the map. He might like um, come in here and trade and like then like run away and let him try and take a third and then come in and kill him. Like he's hiding a lot of his units back at his base right now. He's just like trading with the bare minimum contain force. It's kind of weird from Hero. He's like almost like begging YSC to. They like, he's even running away with the lurkers. He's begging YSC to come out right now. He wants to like trick YSC into like thinking that, oh, okay, maybe I can come back. And he wants YSC to come take a third base or come out onto the map. And then he wants to swallow him up. Well, let's see. YSC moving towards his third base. He's got the Maelstrom now, he's got the Dark Archon. A few storms are available. There's not really any mutas for the snipes. So, uh, you know, the Templar here, we've probably got about three, four, five storms, something like that. Can Hero just bust in here? He's transitioned fully into Lurker Ling at this point. And he's moving on towards that uh, hive play with his fourth base, fourth gas online. What is this? He's just going to spread way out here in the middle. Is he just going to set up a, con a, a further out contain now? <laughs> I think he's toying with his food at this point. Yeah, I mean, he's 40 supply ahead at 12 minutes. I mean, he's either like just guaranteeing the win and like playing like super safe and just allowing the opponent to expand it doesn't matter. He's just going to like, you know, play full base, go into hive and... Or we're gonna see like look at this just massive massive armada just look at that virus just moving across the map right now this is like a new coronavirus variant guys oh this is kind of crazy like look how many units there are like the maelstrom's not even gonna do anything and he's, he's got all his units pinned on the right hand side as well so now he's like lurker contained from like being able to defend his his own base right now and all these dragoons have no templar support so they can be mowed down by target fire off these hydras as well and with the ling support this is a nightmare situation even the probes going down there yeah probes being transferred not the right time for that, but why is he going to try to break out of here? There's just way too many lurkers, though, way too many lings, and the endless streams of red coming across the map is uh, Sauron Zerg-esque. I mean, he can't do anything with this uh, Maelstrom, like you were saying. Maybe he can throw it out now, but GG is called. He just taps out. YSC getting completely overwhelmed and destroyed by Hero. Wow. Yeah, I mean, they're absolutely stellar stuff from Hero as well. Like, he, he, it's almost like he was trying to guarantee that win as much as possible and, like, really kid him with that overwhelming force. That was just nothing that YSC could possibly do, even in his, like, wildest of dreams and the best storms of his life could never overcome. Okay. Blitz Y, our next map here with Royal hitting the field top right. This is a decent map to take on a strong Zerg player, I feel. Um, basically, there's no great place to take your third base, and there's right. a lot of opportunities to like break uh, a Zerg player who's trying to play macro. 
Yeah, and you don't want to open up with Lurker or Zerg against good players, so it's not like you can just go Lurkers and shut down this catwalk and what have you, Like, even though that might seem like a good idea to newer players at the high level, Lurkers are just not a great opener at all. You need something that's um, much more optimized, like you need units like Mutalisks or Zerglings that can with your unit control get better results whereas with lurkers like there's more opportunities for the terran to abuse you than you them until defilers become relevant yeah so likely we'll just see a muta opener here um royal i would expect some sort of two racks out of him he's so good at punishing a zerg player and just making sure that they uh, you know can't get away with too much and they have to build the uh, the right number of sunkins and the right number of links to hold on 12 hatch here coming out of hero and no eight racks for royal so he's gonna get away with this yeah it's crazy I mean, oh, yeah. CC. This, okay. this, yeah, yeah, this, this reminds me of like the era where Flash was just going CC first every single game and like no one was countering him. And sometimes when they did, did try and counter him, he'd still win even though he was opening CC first. And crazy era to, to be in and to watch and witness. And we're seeing the same kind of ballsy action from Royal here. And it's so common for Zergs to open pool first because yeah. of the, 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 the opportunity of going eight racks here. So it's like you're expecting the eight racks so much that you want to go pool first. And it's two player maps. You don't want your hatchery to be blocked, right? By the SCB, if it's like just a fast SCB scout even. So mm -hmm. usually you do go for pool first in these situations. So having the balls to go CC first like this is crazy. Yeah, that's wild. Um, curious that Royal even built the the barracks inside the main as well. It's um interesting decision there, and we are gonna have the the second supply depot at the front. Like he's setting it up for a wall, but there's no barracks in the wall. It's a little bit funny here. Yeah. Here we're gonna go ahead and scout, see everything that's going on, and realize that he could probably take another base here. Maybe he should throw down a third hatch here. I'm not sure. He's already got gas going, so I guess he's just gonna get into uh, a layer. I'd like to see his main. Did he actually make? Layer, or did he go for speed here? Maybe he wants to Ling all in and try to break him. No, layer well, is on no the way. There is no wall, so Ling all in would be a consideration for sure. But uh, I, I don't think Hero would, would necessarily commit to something like that. I mean, maybe there's like a 10% chance he does something like that. But even though he's capable of it, it's not his like go to. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't usually do that kind of thing. Yeah, I think he's just going to take this as a challenge. Like, all right, fine, Royal, you get a little advantage here. Nice cheeky uh, CC first. Let's see if you can handle my mid game. Yeah. I mean, that's not a bad choice as well. Like, just because, I mean, CC first is such a potent um, advantage for Terran. But, I mean, he's still got to execute his build well. It's not like he can just, like, A move his Marines and win. So. Uh, Hero certainly, with, with the 2.5 hatch, will be able to catch up in the economic curve the longer the game goes on. So, as long as like Hero trades well in the mid game phase and doesn't like get punished or anything, he's going to be sitting pretty still. Yeah, let's see what he can do here. Royal already moving out with some Marines. He's going to threaten, try to force some Lings like I was talking about before. Always in his mind with that SCV, he can see what amount of lings are being produced here and and try to counter it uh, appropriately with the number of mar naked marines moving across the map that can deal with it but he's got to be very careful if you start to lose early marines you're going to lose that advantage that the cc first granted you so he's moving out a little bit and then kind of switching it up and moving backwards over and over and now that he's lost the scv it's unlikely that he'll go across the map here yeah, I mean, at the very least, he's, you know, trying to force Lings, maybe a sunken, but yeah, I mean, just a few speed Lings and going to be checking in on what's going on. Uh, does lose one of those Zerglings on the exit, not the end of the world there. Would have been pretty bad if he lost two. Has the overlord still in a position to spot this move out, which is a much more standard move out timing, around five minutes, two medics and about eight or ten or so marines, and two sunkens will be forced as a result. You could go like mass speedlings here to counter this, but then you run the risk of being really behind economically if he just turns around, so um, really really a better idea just to get these two sunkens finished. But the timing might be such that if he stims and goes right now, he might get in it before the second sunken finishes, but I don't think so. Yeah, these are going to be really close right now. 
There's the stim. Second sunken finishes. So it looks like he's going to be on time here, and Royal will just have to back away. He's going to run on back home and uh, you know, take his advantage here and take the the uh, addition of those extra sunken colonies um, as a sign that we're going to have less mutas here to harass and, and just roll forward here into the next stages of this game. Yeah, I mean, losing those two drones to mine, and also the the cost of the, the creep currently in the sunken, does does make it so that you can't spend all your gas to make these mutilisks to to go up to a high threat early on. But it's like Hero with the free hatch um, opening will be able to like still get seven mutas out here, so he can still threaten the natural expansion. There's only two turrets in the natural actually. So if he throws down a third sunken and starts to harass the natural quite heavily, and Royal goes for a counter, this might work out pretty good for Hero. He's not going after the turrets here, just focusing on picking off SCVs one by one. Uh, he already has like three or four now. Should be able to get another one on that uh, building SCV. More sunkins coming down here, just like you were saying. As he continues this harassment, not worried about that marine medic ball. And Royal is just going to turn around and head back home, realizing he cannot break through that natural. This is already enough damage to make this worth it. He's he's on the curve now um, yeah. against Royal. He's killed enough SCVs at this point. He just throws down his Queen's Nest and he will transition. Yeah, I think so. He's going to be going into Valkyries, it looks like, is Royal. And uh, losing that many SCVs and then committing to Valkyries is going to be a little bit painful. I mean, he lost a lot of potential mineral income, and Valkyries are very expensive, 275 minerals each, so they do build fast as well. So it's not just that they're expensive, but because they build so quickly to get the maximum juice out of your production time, you're, so you're soaking up so many minerals to get that going. Well, he does get the scan there in the middle. Do you think he's going to cancel? Um, Valkyrie production here because we're definitely switching uh, into into hive tech here. We even have an Evo chamber down for heroes. So if it's crazy Zerg, then Valkyries are still great. Right. You can just go after the overlords while the um, ultras are trying to be produced. Is he actually going to go for this? Is he going to commit to this? It does seem like it, and I don't see, yeah, I, I, I really don't see a Hydra Den, so he is going to go crazy yeah. Zerg here on two base. What is up with the Zerg players today, man? Action did this exact same thing? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of strange. I mean, he could also go Guardians, I guess. He doesn't have to go crazy Zerg, but he has to, he will have to do something to have any kind of long game potential, so he probably will still go Ultralisks no matter what, even if he does go Guardians. And uh, with Valkyries coming out, I think Guardians are a lot less likely as well, so it most likely will be a crazy Zerg play, but after doing this crazy like amounts of mutalisk and lings initially, but the Valkyries are now starting to pop out, so you won't get much more damage with the. He was really hoping for these mutas to kind of get a lot more damage done and, and put him on a clock to get vessels out, but with Valkyries coming out, it basically you know increases the time that you can defend yourself by like two or three minutes. So actually, Royals going to be denying any further damage done to him, which is really critical here because usually there'd be a big window where Roy, a Hero could just sit there hammering him for like. Like at least another minute or two and really get a lot more damage done well this is wild i mean maybe hero just saying like oh, hold my beer or like uh, let me show you how it's done action i'm gonna take <laughs> yeah, this build that you couldn't make work against um mind and show you exactly how to make it work and He's going to fly in here, try to deal some damage. He's got to be really careful with those Valkyries there. Three Valkyries will tear these Mutalists and new ones. So he's got to be super, super careful with every engagement. Does he have six uh, Scourge to actually take this? He's got two, I guess. Not enough to pick yeah, off all of these, but uh, yeah. Hmm. Counterattack? He's going to like, yeah, he's going to counterattack and just sacrifice the third, I think, is the play. Uh, oh, no? Wait, okay. I'm a little bit confused then, because then he's going to sacrifice the third and get nothing done, if that's the case. Yeah, this third is going down 100%. Um, he will just run away the drones here and sacrifice his base. Uh, but he's not diving in on the, the main here. And taking some volleys from these Valkyries coming out. Uh, he had a great opportunity there for a moment, I felt like. There was no Valkyries in the natural, there was just a few Marines there. 
If he had gone for that counter attack, he might have actually done quite a bit of damage. I think he, I think the bunker changed his calculation. He was worried about too many of his units getting sponged up and then having no map control at all. And he wants to have a little bit of map control so he can help pincer with his ultralisk that are going to be coming out soon. So maybe he's trying to calculate not wasting any units because so, he needs them to support the ultralisk because he's not going to have a high production. So if he can maintain his current unit and he, he invests in so many Valkyries, maybe he's calculating that there won't be a sizable enough bio force to, to counter him and he's just gonna make a big wall of sunken and this, this could work for hero but it's gonna be tricky because the valkyries will eventually start killing overlords and then you can't even make units so he needs to make sure he gets some kind of answer for these valkyries yeah we're getting to that level now where the valkyries can just kill all the scourge and none of the valkyries will wow. die oh man the scourge is acting so stupid there and not connecting at all. Here comes another round. All of them die again. Now it's getting really, really dirty here. Lings are going to run by the bunker, and there are some uh, some vultures popping out here, funnily enough. He's going to be transitioning to deal with those ultras with just mines and stuff, but Lings getting in here, dealing a lot of damage right now. They're going to be picking off quite a few uh, SCVs, and they're going after the machine shop right now. He picks that off. I'm not sure what exactly was being uh, researched there. Mines. Maybe, I, I guess, no, he's already got mines. Remember, mines were being thrown down. Oh, okay, oh then, uh... catching the mutilus oh. here. All of them going to fall. <laughs> That's rough. You need mutus. Rough. You need mutus to help you uh, actually connect with the scourge, right? The mutus have to uh, yeah. soak some damage so that the scourge can connect. More ultra or more uh overlords popping out here but they might just be sacrificial royals just coming in with the valkyries here ready to slaughter these oh this is painful yeah i mean he's, he's got a spore colony to try and protect the overlord look at how many overlords there are oh my god look how many overlords could go down here saying he has got some ultras connecting with the bioforce but they're gonna get mowed down and target oh, fired down in there small numbers of in so many overlords oh. Oh, that's... That's... He's got three. That's... He's got three supply. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! That noise oh, shouldn't man. sound. You sounded like an overlord yourself yeah. there at the end. My <laughs> God, <laughs> that was painful. Oh My... man, I felt like an overlord dying. My poor Zerg heart, man. It can't take any more of this. The ultras are gonna maybe break through here. He's dragging the mines actually into some of the marines, but. They deal massive damage here regardless, and there's just enough SCVs and, and Marines here in the back to probably hold this off. Ah, oh, man, this is this is rough, dude. This is everything that Hero's been able to produce, and he's finally going to get some more o Overlords out. He can almost make something right now. <laughs> it's so close. Almost. <laughs> Imagine making that many Overlords and you still can't make anything. That's wild. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Well, he's going to pop out a few more Ultralis here. He's going to start a few more uh, Overlords as well. He's got the Mineral Bank to do so. He has a third base down in the bottom left-hand corner, and he's trying to get that gas online. He's managed to deny the third against all odds here right now. Yeah. So, I mean, things are still semi-playable right here for Hero, but it's just so rough to lose that many Overlords, man. It's terrible. I mean, the, to be to be fair, the science facility is uh, uh, delayed, so there wasn't, there's no vessels right now, but I mean, it doesn't really matter. We're going to have a big mech transition from Royal at this point, and uh, that's all we're going to really need. But if, if somehow Hero can make this game, or keep this game scrappy, I should say, and uh, keep the, the Terran in small enough number and the tanks spread out enough. Oh, my drag on those SCVs! Oh, this game is crazy, saying what is going on? You need to be careful not to use these ultras free. Once to just trade in, though, anyway, gets the mind on the other tank to take it out but tanks already have 100 gas ultras are 200 apiece here so so far the trades are still going in royal's favor and the vultures coming in to the bottom left there is a sunken on the way but if he gets his gas mining shut down it's gonna be really painful for hero he needs that 900 gas a minute to have any chance at coming back in this game yeah this is not gonna be any overlords over here so mines are gonna connect on anything that gets sent down to clear that out and He's not going to be able to mine from the third base for quite some time here. Eating another mine there. Very annoying stuff right now for Hero. Ugh, dude, that sad little spore colony there. Just sitting underneath that overlord. Just can't do anything, man. And neither can Hero, man. He just, he's just so far behind right now because of that overlord. 
uh, wipeout. There's really nothing else kind of like that, I feel, in this game where uh, you reach like a critical mass and then your opponent just can't build anything. It's kind of wild. Mm. Well, on the one hand, you can build loads of overlords because of having lava, but then that's also a double-edged sword. Now you can't build anything anyway because you just spent all your lava and your money anyway. So it's like, yeah, a little bit rough on, in every regard for a Zerg player losing that amount of overlords there. Uh, if, if Hero wins this game, I'm sure we're going to be doing backflips off the wall, Sam. Yeah, that would be absolutely ridiculous, but I, I think it's unlikely here. Royal is such a strong player, such a... A uh, good contestant here. His army is getting really strong with the, the number of tanks that have been produced now. And Vulture's even able to fight the Ultras here. They're yeah. so low in number. And it, it's just not a great composition to deal with Mech. The Ultralisk, uh, he, he doesn't have what it the, the amount of income that he would need to transition to a different tech. And just what he can build right now is terrible against what Royal's doing. Yeah, and because we, we are so far behind, we've even got the units that we counter killing our units as well. So we've got, like, even Ultras dying to Vultures without mines being utilized, which is crazy. And he, just, he can just ignore these Sanko Conleys and kill all that. But we do have um, Hero trying to do a little bit of a dive bomb here. Um, he has got Irradiate, though, so I don't think this is going to go very well. And with two Valkyries also supporting, does kill one of those Valkyries with Scourge. But this is just a pitiful attempt from Hero trying to make the best of a bad situation. But he's still coming up short here, saying this is looking more and more untenable as long as the game goes on yeah i finally get some mining going down at bottom left but we've got royal on the same number of bases and going mank so his army is just always going to trade better oh he just barely saves that base that's crazy that he managed to save that eating some more mines though on his ultras and just letting them get softened up right now he adds another base on if royal just doesn't attack for another five minutes maybe we can still see hero win yeah well we have to see royal not attack because even though it's a very uh, bad situation for hero the only reason why royal is trading so well is because he's setting up these siege positions and not not attacking like if, if he does commit his units out onto the map and they do get swallowed up a little bit there is more comeback potential but if you keep all your tanks together and you keep the ultra count whittled down there's no hope for the zerg at all like the tank count will continue to grow and swell and it has become uh, way too much of a mount everest for hero to try and ever hike up and he will be a very motivated person trying to hike up that mountain Everest, but like every other person that's uh, not made it, they, they were once a motivated person, and uh, unfortunately, I think it's going to be the same result here for Hero, and he's going to freeze up on Mount Everest trying to climb it. Wow, okay, we're just going to sack a whole bunch of medics here. Um, kind of funny, we don't really need these units anymore, so they're going to go out and die. And, uh, you know, here we're going to gobble those up, but... They, that's just really not a big deal here for Royal right now. I mean, look at this. Uh, Hero's going to get two more expansions. How did this even happen? How is this well, even being allowed to happen? We've got a base here on high ground with no defenses. Yeah. It's because it's mech, so he's, he's he's banking on the fact that Royal won't push out with his tanks until he has like 20 or 30 tanks at least. So he's he's just, and it, it is right to assume that because Royal shouldn't move out as well. So he can kind of get away with this for probably like a, a minute or two, but eventually Royal will do the big push, eventually. It's just that he's probably got a couple of minutes of breathing room here. We'll probably see a little bit of a, yeah, he's going to start shoving down on the left-hand side, but this is more like a, a Terran versus Protoss kind of approach. He's going to be much more methodical about it. A lot of radiates here ready to go for Royal. I mean, everything getting irradiated. All these uh, mutas, and there's just really not much left aside from that. Gonna drag a bunch of mines here. Lings are all gonna go down. Singular Ultra making its way across and doing absolutely nothing but just eating about 200, 300 damage. Now the hatchery is in range. One more shot will take that out. Hero is on his last legs here. He's going to be losing his drones uh, over at that base. He doesn't have a Nidus to uh, get those out onto the map. And the last few ultras end up falling. That gas bank that we had earlier, 1,500 gas just disappeared. And it looks like he's made all mutas. So one yeah. final gambit here from Hero. Can he just... Oh god, I've got scan. Oh, scan. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh man. 
That's not uh, looking good. I'm, no, and he's also got quite a lot of vessels. Could also make Valkyries again if he wanted to. And he's getting all the drone snipes here, even though there's two Sunkers to try and deny. It's just so painful for Hero in every regard. I feel like Hero is Rocky just getting punched around the ring over and over again. And we're just hoping that he can find a way to start swinging back once the guy tires himself out. But Royal's just not getting tired. And uh, I don't think there's any hope. I don't think Adrian made it to, to watch the fight to give uh, Rocky the spirit that he needs to win this time. No, I mean, it doesn't matter how much spirit you have right now. Mutas are coming in, and they're just being met by masses of Goliaths, and it radiates on all of them. There's turrets here. There's just so much mech to deal with. He does get every single vessel, which Ooh. is a big deal, and he's going to start to whittle down the Goliath number. He gets another kill here on turrets, but more Goliaths are going to come forward. That one scan that came down we saw earlier was actually pretty impactful here in that he just was able to start making Goliath right at the moment when he saw that. And, oh, he's shooting his own tank. That's kind of funny. Nice. That tank's going to go down. <laughs> nice. Uh, Hero's going to well, clear he, right, out a lot of this. Right now, Hero's going to get a little bit of damage done, but eventually, um, Royal's not, gonna, not only going to counterattack, but he's also going to make like more anti-muta stuff. So eventually, Hero, uh, Hero will get shut down in the air more. But, but there is a still a window for, to punish this. Like Maybe he catches some of these tanks or these vultures on the exit as well. Um, as long as he gets some kind of damage done here and prevents Royal from growing too much, there, there's a window that I think Hero could potentially come back in this game if he can shut down the anti-air. He's doing a great job of pulling out the mutas as they get irradiated. He's got plus two armor and plus one attack, which I'm a little bit surprised about, honestly. Come on, um, Rocky. Come on, Rocky. <laughs> take the punch. Somehow he managed to sneak out those upgrades uh, during all of this, and he's doing a pretty good job shutting down these Goliaths over and over again. We're going to go after the science vessel as well. He gets that. He kills off all of the Goliaths. Can he actually take out Hero, top left? Hero. Come on, this is crazy. So far, he's doing it. His turrets on the way are finishing up, though. will make it harder to bust his position, but still trading off these Goliaths as they come out in a trickle. Looks like uh, Royal's getting a bit fed up of this, though. He's, he's had enough, and he's shoving his tanks down the catwalk right now. There's a couple of muters and Scourge to slow this down and punish this. would make this a little bit of a weird situation right now, because there's no anti-air down here, and there is some Scourge, so Valkyries can't come down to support that. He is barely trading off these Goliaths with target fire, but with a 3-2, Weapon upgrades on those Goliaths. He is trading out with an advantage against those mutas, so eventually he will force a retreat in Hero. Meanwhile, though, Hero slowly trying to chip away at these tanks with the mutas. Does lose the hat tree, though, so we've reduced now to just one base worth of economy to the two of Royal here, since his natural is also just now mined out. So this is a really bizarre situation we have. If Hero had just one more mining base right now, there might be a lot more life in it for him, but I don't think he's even got that many drones mining in bottom left. No, he doesn't have much economy at all. And this was a wild game. Uh, Hero really made it into a contest here when it uh, potentially should have just been over. However, uh, I think this is likely the end. He's picking off a few last tanks here, squeezing out as much damage as he can. Uh, as the last middle go down, Goliath pushed forward for the win. Royal takes this map away and shuts down hero here wow this is this has been a great week already man i mean week yeah. number one looking fantastic back and forth and back and forth now we've got i mean best or snow's gonna come out next they're probably gonna be able to shut down royal am i right I think so. This is going to be a real nice back and forth tempo kind of week, and I'm really happy about it. But I just want to point out, I'm so impressed by Hero making a game out of that after being that behind. Like, every other Zerg player would have just wanted to scream and throw their keyboard out the window in that situation. Three supply. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I definitely know the feeling, man. Trying to go uh, crazy Zerg into Valkyries. Such a painful experience. You always wish that you built more Scourge, but even, uh, you know, as many Scourge as he produced, he made a lot. Just not going to be enough there. And we're going to jump into our next game. Hero's been eliminated. Snow or Best? Who's it going to be? Best is going to get sent out here to take on Royal. Dark Origin. I'm getting sick of this map, man. What do you feel? <laughs> yeah, I'm not too fond of it either both as a, a player of it and a spectator of it. it. It's not as bad as some maps we've had in the past, but I mean, it, it, yeah, it's not It's not super great. I would like to say that I'm happy about the best choice. This is the plan of action I, I expected and wanted. 
I really want to see either a sulky versus snow. Sorry, yeah, a sulky versus snow or a sulky versus sorry, snow versus sulky or light versus snow final set would be my ideal. So I want to see. Ideally, I would like to see best win here, and then I would like to see um, light beat best, and then. We can go from there, and, uh, but I think as long as that 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 happens, I'm going to be seriously happy and excited. It's been a great week already. I'm surprised to see uh, Zerg uh, behind at this point, but um, just the performances from our other lineups have been fantastic. Nothing to complain about at all. Now Royal. He's doing a bit of a sacrifice here. He's actually slowed down his barracks timing in order to make sure that he can't get uh, gas stolen here. Now, players have found multiple different ways, many different ways of dealing with this early gas steal, but I haven't seen too many people employ this exact method. It is known, though. It is known. You can slow this down. It's not like something we've never seen before, but... Uh, I'm not sure how this is going to math out if we see some pressure coming out of best here in the early game. It doesn't seem like he's building a zealot, but uh, if you imagine a zealot walking in right now before the marine even uh, finishes, it could be pretty devastating. Yeah. Well, it looks like we don't have any early zealot on the way. At least not. It doesn't look like yet. Yeah, I don't think he's making any zealot at all. Maybe just going to be a 21, 23 nexus here going straight into Dragoons. Well, oh, and... the observer's lagging out. <laughs> well, in that case, um... Oh, wait a second. SEV goes down. Oh, that's... That, that was the low brutal. HP one he was harassing earlier. Yeah, because he only, like, tickle repaired it a little bit. It was, like, like two or three shots from dying earlier on, and best hunted that down. Finally clicking on the uh, SEVs to find the weak one, and uh, finally got the kill on that. That's rough. Well, I was about to say that Rose is going to get away with this scot free because he... Uh, you know, kept the gas, and he uh, doesn't get punished for having the late Marines, but he loses an SCV. That's a big pickup here for best in the early game, and he's going to get away with not making any early Zealots, just straight into a Dragoon and a very fast Nexus. And, uh, yeah, that's, that was like a 20 Nexus as well, so super early from him. Getting away with the absolute uh, earliest possible Nexus in this current situation, and also, like, I think Royal is going to be hurting a little bit because Terran build orders are very, like, well optimized. So he went, the, the fact that he went for this, like, fast gas style and also lost an SEV to a probe scout, I think, yeah, this might be a little bit awkward for Royal because he had something very specific planned out. Like, the bunker is going to be ever so slightly late, for example. So the goon's going to be a little bit more annoying here at the front. And um, everything's just going to feel a little bit off for Royal, if you know what I mean. Let's see if Royal throws down this bunker now. He does push back the dragon with the second dragon coming across the map you got to be careful I'm gonna throw that bunker down and there it is he's got a bit of a glut of gas right now i'm curious to see where that's gonna end up going uh or if that's just a. Uh... oh gosh the vulture almost getting blocked there it does manage to get by but uh, i'm wondering if this is just a, uh, you know something that he has planned for this gas or if this is just a uh, a problem due to the early lost uh, SCV and and the, the the gas take at the very beginning of this game. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not not entirely sure either, to be honest with you. But I was I was really impressed with the body block on that vulture. It was a uh, almost a good change. Ooh, a little bit of a DT action going to be coming out of best. A little bit of sneaky sneaky. Uh, this also could be a vulture drop build. That's uh, right, a DT drop build potentially, rather than just straight up DTs running in. Or it could be trying to uh, glitch over the, the DTs over the back mineral here, using a probe to slide them over the mineral fields where the temples are. I I see a robo here, so I really think this is going to be drop. Uh, yeah, I think well. so too. It looks like that DT drop, and the the real benefit of the DT drop play um, over going for something like hopping it over the mineral patch is that even if there's a scan. Um, you can just pick it up. You can just pick up the DT and keep juggling it and not allow the uh, you 
units to pick that off. Um, we're going to fight here in the middle of the map. Pretty good control so far, though, from Bass. He picks off the first uh, Vulture and backs away from the mines. Very, very nice play here from Bass. He's not going to take any damage from this, and we're not even going to get a Vulture uh, up across these bridges to throw down some mines. It's uh, very, very good for Bass right now because he doesn't want to allow any mines to go down at this third base to prevent his, um, his third from going down. Um, because he's not going to have observers here. He just doesn't have the gas for it. He's going to be building a bunch of DTs, drop, you know, he has to get upgrades and all this stuff. So, yeah, he just doesn't have the money to actually pop out observer right now. Um, preventing the vultures from getting over here and throwing down this mine is high priority. Yeah, but it's pretty semi all in what Best is doing, though, in, in the sense that he has to get something done with these DTs for this to be like a very playable game still. So yeah. like, he's hoping to get at least something done with these DTs. Cause if not, then he is kind of just behind. Like he's got lower production, slower expansion timing and what have you. So, yeah, he needs to get something done with this. Um, I, it looks like Royal is kind of expecting the possibility of it being reverb, but the timing of the shuttle is a little bit slow, so you might be suspicious and think that it is a DT drop as well. Got turrets everywhere. Everything's ready here for Royal. Unlikely that we'll get a lot of damage done here, but maybe he can pick off some buildings on the periphery. Maybe he can find a little spot here with not enough um, vision because there's no scan or anything. Um, getting completely denied thus far and yeah. he's just gonna drop way out here on the periphery and just look for some for some uh, buildings that he can hit and there's really nothing here in, in Royal's base that he can actually go after Royal saw the blurs actually and repositioned his tanks so he's really on top of things is Royal doing a great job of negating any kind of early game damage the shuttle's being moved over to scoop those up so they don't eventually get shut down in that main base a little bit unfortunate here for Best. He's not um, out of the game or anything, but he was hoping for a lot more done here. This will keep uh, Royal pinned down so he can still set up, but... Ooh, he may be getting a probe or two here with this vulture. It's pretty big. Yeah, picking off a few probes here. Extending his advantage right now. DTs are going to be laid out at the front of the natural and just see what they can pick off. Anything coming out or... Uh, you know, deny Royal from pushing out at least until he has scan. It's too bad that uh, Best didn't fly around and into the main base from the from the bottom side here, because there's a bunch of buildings down uh, in that area that weren't totally covered by the turrets that could have been abused. Yeah. But here, he's just not going to be able to do anything with these CTs aside from stop these turrets from coming up out here in the front. Yeah, it does force, like, uh, the commsat, slows down any kind of early push timings. It does allow him to maybe, you know, eventually get some storm drops off as well. Like, he might be hoping on, like, the Terran moves out, tries to take a third, and around, like, 9 minutes, 30, 10 minutes, we start storm dropping and getting a lot of kills racked up. Um, or just having, like, a gateway man army to, to fight Royal and just smash him with his, like, you know, usual ape arms, just wrapping around the Terran player and demolishing even, like, the most impenetrable-looking defenses. Oh, oh is the storm already? Yes. <laughs> that was right a very time. fast storm drop. Holy. Royal was not ready wow. for that. And he just lost. We were, but... He lost a huge amount of SCVs there. Um, see, being the fact that he's only on two bases right now, uh, most of his saturation is here at the natural. So that was a lot of kills. And Best picked up the Templar. He's just going to be, you know, hanging out, waiting for some more energy to come back in and finish off those damaged SCVs as well. Yeah, kind of wild. I mean, I did expect that from Best, but the timing was a lot more crisp than I anticipated. So pretty impressive stuff from him. The third base is on the way for Royal. So he has still got a pretty good setup as long as he doesn't just straight up die but he's he was like just about 40 supply behind best right now i mean there's a chance that best could just bowl him over with his like you know usual uh you know bulldog antics of just running into the terran play with zealot goon shuttle templar and just out executing him oh here we go another storm drop coming in does he have the storm he's got the energy all right gets a few more kills nine total on this archon and nine doesn't sound like a huge amount but at this point in the game it's very very painful uh, this is a super early storm drop and the damage here is going to take a long time to recover from uh, because we're just two uh, cc's 
Oh, yes, if he's blocking at the bottom of the ramp, he can't get his units down to defend against his Archon. There's a chance if his Archon to get a lot more damage done, but also Bess isn't paying attention. So we're seeing a really weird, weird situation where uh, um, Royal is using the AI to his advantage of like body blocking that uh, uh, Archon with the Zealots, while Bess is executing an attack on the third base right now. And the uh, SCVs are being pulled to the third base as well, so they can help defend and like bottleneck this up a little bit. Storms are now going down. The SCVs are also in trouble. A lot of Storms available to Bess as well. And he might be able to come in and just crack open this Terran position and shut down the third base entirely. This is really rough for Roy. He's on 60 supplied or 120 of best. Like, as a numbers game, this is looking so best favored right now. Yeah, this is just typical best here. Um, definitely the uh, very fast DT drop into Storm was something new that we haven't seen before, but uh, this follow-up attack absolutely... Uh, out of best playbook here and he takes out the cc that is so bad for royal i mean he is light years behind at this point and uh fourth base just went down for best he's just pumping out units like crazy with such an advantage it's hard to imagine royal being able to bring this one back with 70 supply over his opponent Bess is feeling yeah. feeling great, look, looking great, and uh, set up for a big win here. Yeah, I mean, Bess must be feeling like Harambe in heaven, wearing sunglasses, like sipping like cocktails right now. Like he's like prime ape mode. Like this is his element right now. Yeah, he's uh, delicately handling this little child here royal um but he could smash him at any moment his fists are balled up he's ready to fight and the moment that royal steps out of line i think we're gonna see uh, this man get splattered he's slowly edging forward look at how t just slowly and tactfully royal is uh, edging out here towards the third base he knows he knows that uh, Bess is just waiting for this moment. He's a kitten in the hands of a gorilla right now, saying he needs to be very cautious in how he moves around. The gorilla could just tie in his grip at any moment and just splat. So, yeah, right now, this is kind of like a dire situation. Best is almost maxed out, and Royal's only halfway there. So that's an absolute crazy state of affairs to be in as a Terran player. Third base will be starting to go down on location. Uh, floating over now but uh i think it's yeah way too little too late eventually best can just decide to just tighten the noose squash this little kitten in his big gorilla paws and there's not going to be much that royal can do about it here 90 supply advantage well, we're gonna see what that looks like here with protoss coming in against this army like we don't, we don't still have anything man there's nothing here for royal most of his uh Tanks are actually up on high ground here now, and I mean it's it's not even funny how one-sided this is. It's kind of kind of crazy, really. Yeah. Um, it, it is like watching a gorilla play with a little kitten. It's it's so one-sided. It's, it's it's kind of crazy to think about. I mean, if, if best just attack moved, I think he still would win. It's crazy. GT finally going to be called, and we are going to be having the, the the narrative that I wanted here. I'm really excited that um, we're having this back and forth between the three races. I think we're going to have some really great sets coming up here for the final soon. And here we go. Soul Key coming out here. Can you run it back? It's time for the Soul Key show, man. Just like in the finals. Or was that the semifinals or the finals when he just ran it through? Yeah. Took it down um, everybody and the whole squad. Oh, he played it insane, Saiyan. Uh, well, one thing I wanted to say, um, I'm, I, I, I really want to see Sulky beat best here, but I don't want to see a Sulky show per se. I want to see, because then, then we'd have, um, I want to see maybe like Light versus Sulky after um, best goes down. And then we'd have, if Light wins, we got Light versus Snow. It's a really great final set potential. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing Sulky versus Snow either. Anyway, this, this goes, it's going to be a lot of fun. And we've got the strongest player, definitely the strongest Zerg player, maybe the strongest player right now here on our screens in the blue. Solki playing on Kim Kiminchul. I've never seen that ID. He's no longer needs money. He got that prize money from ASL. He's sitting pretty now. Changed his ID. He's feeling good. 
1주차 다승왕 확정이기 때문에 주장 확정에다가 맞죠. Gateway first year for best. 포르브로 예, 서치 가고 있는 Scouting in the wrong direction and 그리고 김민철 선수는 왼쪽 12 드론 Yeah, he wants that money saying so. He's going to be uh, playing as high out that's for sure. Uh, he likes his money and the, the only way to get that money is by playing well and uh, winning the weeks. Trying to get that old kill prize. He, the old kill prize is on the table for him yet. Yeah, this week, but we'll be seeing him having potential to secure that prize later on in the season, that's for sure. Yeah, it's hard to stay on the top for very long. Only Flash was able to do it for more than a couple of seasons. You gotta take as much advantage of your dominance uh, as you can while you have it. And Solki here. Like you said, not able to get that all kill, but can he carry it home for the team? Can he carry Zerg to a victory here? Well, I would, I would love to see. It. I want to, see, yeah, like I said, I want to see Sulky win this game, and then we've got, we've, we've got like Light versus um, Sulky, uh, Light versus Snow, or Sulky versus Snow potential games coming up, and all of those will be absolute bangers. So. As long as I, I Soki wins here, I'm going to be super happy. And uh, best, best though is like no slouch. Like even though it's not his best matchup, he, he certainly is more than capable in this matchup as well. So far, almost doing a good job of chasing down that drone. Going to be coming into the main base now, trying to get on top of these drones just before the lings are hatching. If he can get just one or two drone kills, that's going to be huge. That's going to be a beautiful drone drill on this sellout though. Going to be denying any further kills for the time being. But lings now hatching out. Going to be getting behind the minerals with that zealot probe combo. But with some good uh, positioning of the lings, you can uh, cycle around that zealot and pick it up from both sides. Uh, you can hit over the wall here with the probe. It's so annoying. That 5 HP drone, is he going to go for it? He doesn't. And the target here on the probe picks that off. Really, really well done here by Solki. Missing an opportunity to kill a drone, but he took a pretty decent trade there behind the mineral patches regardless. Yeah, I mean... This is this is pretty good for Sulky, honestly. And losing just one or two drones would have been pretty critical damage there. But because we didn't get that, just some lost mining time, this actually works really well for Sulky. And he's got to be going for that 973. And with the horizontal entrance to this expansion as well, it's very favored and close born. So I think this is a very good choice from Sulky. You do, usually against gateway first openings, you wouldn't go for 973. But if you start to get control of the Zealot situation early on, like killing that first Zealot, you can much more confidently go for plays like this. Yeah, the vertical entrance makes it a lot more difficult to hang on here. And there's almost almost no space behind this to build cannons right only uh, above the uh, above the nexus and below the nexus however two zealots three zealots are going to make their way into this natural and he might actually find out about the the 973 coming here uh, unless we got a bunch of links popping out right now i guess he's got a few popping here six are going to come forward can he actually hold this i think the zealot will just run by into the main and find out about this uh hydral stand no oh he gets it just oh. in time. Wow. He manages to deny that. Great observing here um, by our KCM observer to, 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 to see that right there. But that is crazy that he's not going to be able to see uh, the Hydralis then. And could potentially be caught off guard still, yet, even though he got into the main base. Yeah. I mean, this is working so well for Sulky because by the time the, the Corsair has confirmed what exactly it is, will be around the timing that Sulky wants to hit anyway. So, he, he, unfortunately for Best, he's even made a Dragoon. Oh no. Okay, so this, yeah, it's probably a worst case scenario for Best going forward here. He wants to really desperately try and get some sort of scout off, but he does distract the Lings and allow this probe scout to get out here. So, maybe, just maybe, with a little bit of luck, that this probe might see these Hydras pop out and then. And Best will have a chance at holding. Wow, that's a really sick play by Best actually getting the probe out here. Um, yeah. This is really, really smart stuff from him. And he is going to get in here and see the Hydra popping. And that is a massive scout. Even better than having the, the Corsair come through because it's just that much faster. It gives him that much more time to start these cannons. And he is going to throw down a whole bunch of them. I think we'll have to see Soul Key switch out of this play, right? I, I don't think this is going to work anymore, is it? Yeah, he'll have to make this more into a, a fake Hydra bust for sure. I mean, the Hydras technically will arrive just before the cannons morph in, but like because of the other cannons positioning without range, they still can't really get a lot done before the other cannons warp in. 
Yeah, it's going to start to hit this wall here. The cannon positioning is very, very nice, though. And as they finish up, without range, he can't hit this. Um, he should be able to get the uh, forge here, though, right? With range, once it's done, um, probably we'll be able to hit that. I don't know. This is a... The, 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 two, two or three hydras can hit it, but right. like it's still a bit awkward, right? Like Eventually, best could move out. So uh, he's committing to quite a few hydras, though. He's not... He, he, this is like uh, a super fake where he's like... He's not just made like seven. He's gone like, I don't know, like n nine or ten, maybe even twelve hydras here. So he, he will eventually kill this forge, it looks like, for sure. Ooh, is it going to finish in time? Confused. I think just barely not able to get that plus one. And so denying that and having the layer on the way here with more hatches, we can definitely transition out of this uh, position here. Um, it's yeah. certainly doable when you've denied the, the plus one. The links can fight and blo body block for these... Uh, Hydra's a lot easier, and you can be a lot more effective uh, fighting against the early zealots. So uh, he can start to drone up really, really heavy now and just rely on the units that he's made to keep best off of him while he does so. Hmm. I think best is slightly oversaturated in his natural as well. Like, I didn't see enough probes in his main and too many in his naturals. I think the, the mineral smoothing was a little bit off for like a minute there. So I think he's not quite got the, the mineral influx that he should have. I think he's fixed the minerals now, but there was a, a little moment there where he wasn't quite mining optimally for like 30 seconds or so at least so i think that's uh, he hasn't quite got the production online that he should have maybe it's like a few uh, 100 or 200 or 300 minerals down maybe, than where he should be well, he should be getting a double upgrades here behind this and there it is two forges to try and catch up on that those extra gateways are starting to come up but you can see soul key just pumping up the drones this is what he does best is macroing like an absolute god uh, as we expect from this guy falling back now with the lings and hydras but you know he's just gonna look for a good position where he can fight these zealots and his hydras are really going to start to stack up here soon. Um, the six hatch production is now online, and I don't think he needs too many drones at this point. He's going to start to produce a lot of uh, fighting units now. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the strength of the six hatch hydra. As long as you've got the drone saturation that you need, you can make such a crazy critical mass of hydras that it's very difficult for the Protoss player to deal with any kind of good storm dodging and what have you. It does get a little bit crazier the, the bigger your army gets. It's very hard to control a pure hydra army if you've got like six or eight control groups of hydras and they're storming you to death so it gets a little bit trickier to execute the further into the game you go with that kind of style but Soki also will keep his uh, options open for a potential muter transition as well so eventually we might see like you know nine or so muters being made that's why we see this dark arc on here because he's assuming some kind of muter play to shave off his high templars and he wants to shut that down the maelstrom and so he may may go for that eventually but for the time being he's gonna make nothing but pure crazy amounts of hydra and it may even just be enough to just stomp best on its own yeah that's definitely a possibility did he actually see the dark archon there with that ling running in i'm not sure lings don't have very good vision range yeah um, so unlikely that he actually spotted that will he suddenly change into mutus though it's not looking like it. Lurker is done, so yeah, he's probably not going to go for that transition. Instead, moving forward to take his fourth base. Yeah, I think this actually makes more sense from Sulky as well overall. It suits his style more, and uh, will set him up for being able to control this space using the Lurkers. Pure Hydra, you kind of need to be a lot more aggressive and fight the, the Zealot Templar back at their base and micro backwards. But with Lurkers out on the field, you can kind of be a bit more passive with how you move around the map and engage the Protoss player. You, don't, you still don't want to let them come onto your side of the map though. So we'll see Sulky set up these kind of like soft contained positions on these uh, outside the choke points of best to kind of slow down any advancements and control the lanes and prevent the, the Protoss player from having too much space to, um, available to him to work with and to have to fight for additional space. So this will buy Sulky the time that he needs to just get his, you know, all his, all his pistons firing and going up into his powerful like seven to nine hatchery production going into late game here.
It will be some time before he makes that transition, but now that we see this third base coming online for best, you will be considering that uh, Hive Turk. These are some High Templar sniping forces. He's kind of baiting the army to move in different directions and then coming in from the backside to try and pick off Templar as they join the army or, uh, you know, try to catch up to the army as it moves up to and fro here. Finally, probe transfer is going to come through, and it looks like Solki has, you know, tested best here and deemed him worthy of having this third base, and mm. he's not going to try and attack into that. All the moves that best made there were correct, and no openings were available for Solki to punish. He's just going to fall uh, over here to his fourth base, set up a really good uh, line of lurkers here and wait for this attack to come in. Yeah, he did the optimal thing of uh, pressuring while expanding and macroing, but now Best doing his own version of that, taking his third base and now applying pressure to the Zerg. There's a big long line of lurkers here. Storm goes off a beautiful dodges and then committing to, to Templar snipes as well, trying to target down individual units as best as possible using the smallest amount of hydras possible. But he is still getting quite a good uh, amount of storms off on these um, clumps of lurkers though so best did get some pretty good value out of his units has yet to get the amulet upgrade to get three storms apiece on these templars but as long as he's trading somewhat effectively maybe he can get a critical amount of goons going that he can start to get something done here but for the time being it's looking pretty crazy still a lot of blue on the map and high just waiting at the north flank as well to maybe come in for a pincer or keep control of this lane if best tries to hit nine o'clock here yeah, best gonna come forward one more time trade some storms for some lurkers there are stacks here of lurkers on the left hand side so there's some good targets for these storms to come in on uh, he's saving a lot of those storms though waiting for the big clumps of hydra to come forward that was a great storm there on the south side but hopefully he's still got one left over for this uh, north uh, flank a maelstrom comes out but he does not have the storm to actually combine with it so just pure dragoon here gonna be fighting against the hydras as they pop out of maelstrom maelstrom does not last nearly as long as some of these other spells so eventually that runs out and a big surround comes through for soul key a great trade by him shaving off a lot of this protoss army yeah i mean maelstrom's kind of like stasis but it allows you to still attack the units so the downside for it is that it lasts a lot uh, less time so you do have to get those units killed or make make use of that spell in a much shorter window than something like stasis so unfortunately for him not getting the trades that he needs and sulky kind of coming out on top uh, the supplies uh, are looking pretty scary for best as well like sulky's trailing behind closely so another uh, drop plays coming into the the, the the main base of best i don't think there's anything here to stop this so i think that some critical damage will be done to best because he's moving out to the middle of the map now trying to take a fourth base as a mural only he's gonna maybe even drop some lurkers at uh, three o'clock would be an interesting play as well but this this main drop in the main will be more than enough to do some uh, critical damage here maybe even stop these uh forges here Ooh, a bunch of templar pop out right as this comes in but he's not going to be able to drop on top of them to, to get rid of them immediately. Instead, he's going to drop right here on the Nexus, kill the Nexus, and then it'll be uh, Templar Archives, Forges, of course, are big targets here. And eventually, you could go for the, the Cyberdyne score and the Citadel of Adu, and that really slows down uh, the, the Templar tech here. But, well, we're st I feel some really strange lag yeah. going on right now this is this is something else That's, um, i think uh best has flipped his lag hack on or something like <laughs> what's going on this is some weird weird lag all of a sudden yeah like wow like oh uh, this is strange the internet cables or something. what's going on here guys like, yeah well really there's been some game, been some glitches with uh battle net recently um i'm not sure if you've seen but like you actually can't join games right now unless i'm actually lagging as well but <laughs> uh, you can't join games right now unless you have the map so you have to like send download each other the map yeah download no. it manually before you can actually join a game which is really really annoying if you want to play ums or <laughs> this is angry <laughs> So it might be something yeah. to do with Battle.net right now. Yeah, Bess is upset right now.
Telling him to quit downloading. Yeah, this is not gonna help. Oh my oh, goodness. Man. The slow motion battle here. Both of the players are running through water right now. Yeah, this is kind of crazy. It's like all of a sudden, like all the units are in like chest high water and they're not very used to walking through water. So they're like, what, what's this strange medium we now have to traverse through? Oh my goodness, this is slow as molasses. One of the observers leaves, but it doesn't make a difference at all. This is why I'm watching like StarCraft in slow motion right now. I wonder if that will like greatly affect the outcome of the game. Like what, what happens if the game is slowed down so much? Like does Protoss get an advantage because your storms are just so much more perfect? Or does Zerg have an advantage because you can storm dodge more perfect? Like I wonder if that <laughs> would necessarily affect the outcome of this game as well. Yeah, this is like turn rate one or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, wow. you know, slow speed, if you change that option. We've never had this in KCM, right? We've never had this kind of lag. I've never had this kind of lag even on the ladder, honestly. It's usually, like, yeah. dropping and eventually somebody, you know, loses connection. It's not, uh, you know, one half speed or one quarter speed for a long extended period of time. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, this is good. I don't know if they can fix this as well. I think they're trying to figure out what to do if, they, if they're going to save the game and reload the save game and see if that fixes it. I don't know what they can do here. That could be possible. I guess we're going to try and uh, reload the save or maybe start over a new game i'm not sure it was very very even there i'm not sure who was uh, at an advantage but i think you could make the case for sulky being in advantage but the problem was was that the recent trades were not as sulky sided as we they could have been so if sulky did better in those fights earlier maybe you could argue that yeah sulky's a clear winner here but with the trades not quite going sulky's way i think there's yeah it looks still more even i would be devastated if they just decided one player would win yeah uh, over the other. we definitely need a rematch if, if uh worst comes to worst here yeah. but let's jump I think ahead it's close enough. yeah i think i think it's close enough that rematch needs to be the case okay first person mode is what we're gonna resort to here looks like the game is running a lot more smoothly now um that the both the observers are out of the game that's kind of crazy I guess we're not going to restart the save or anything like that. Just going to take this fight. Let's see from Soul Key's perspective uh, the, how this game plays out. Man, this is wild. We never well, had this situation. Okay, needs to kill this basic. He's staying on these four bases for quite a long time. And yeah, he wants to get the snipe on this. He has his hive tech on the way, but really critically wants to kill this Nexus. And he's not going to get it. He's not going to get it. He has so many hydras and he didn't kill the Nexus saying this is a little bit rough for Soki. Ideally, he needed that kill on the, the Nexus considering the current game. So he is taking the top left right now while transitioning into his late game. But still, not getting the kill on that Nexus gives Bess a lot more life in this game. Yeah, the drop play didn't work out as well as he had hoped and the uh counterattacks haven't been playing out very well either but this counterattack might be able to do Ooh. it here he's trading really well with lings against dragoons uh, north of this position and he's sniping a lot of observers right now he gets a ton of templar as well that was an amazing trade for sulky yeah, it also covers his retreat as well. Without the observers, he can't push down onto this high ground location and uh, push Sulky away and pin these units in. So right now, a really rough situation for Bess. He wants to just retake this mineral only, get that thrown down again and resaturate. We're now seeing the flip side view Best right now in a little bit of crisis management situation. Currently losing the Nexus, doesn't able to save, wasn't able to save that as well. That's the cancel uh, that as well. And this is really frustrating for Bess. He'd be struggling for resources. He needs this baseline. He's big 
being mined out in his main his natural expansion and soon his main in just a few moments here he, he critically needs to transfer probes to his mineral only when that becomes mined out in his main and if he can't do that he's just going to run out of steam it's got a little force of uh, zealots in the top left trying to get the shutdown on this hatchery as well sulky rallying some units now to try and clean that up and i think he might just barely save this as well so yeah best is in a little bit of a tough situation he's gonna get it dude this oh, is gonna, gonna go down he got it he oh it. man that's oh. huge there's a lot more units coming in than I thought. Yeah, this is this is this, this is this is kind of crazy. Like I thought, I thought sorry, I thought Sulky had a lot more units coming in there. Uh, I thought he was going to clean it up for sure. Um, this is kind of wild, saying this game. Like I thought that for sure that best would be in a really really bad spot right now. But with the killing that base, it's slowing down Sulky enough that maybe we'll see a super late game here. Five plus two zealots, man. They do deal with hatch very very quickly. Unfortunately. Uh, Sulky just didn't have the the lurkers up there to help out, and now going in for another drop into the main base. This is a wild moment here, as the army actually turns around and heads up to the top left. Uh, we cannot run. We we just can't go back home right now. Here is best. There's no way he's going to be able to run home. Uh, his full army. So he's just going for the counter attack right now, and. Solky's desperately trying to get forces here to save his base in the center left while getting as much damage as humanly possible here in the main. Yeah, best knows that if he can get all these units funneled into this tight choke, maybe there's a chance of still trading off the superior army of Sulky. And he is banking on that while the Lurkers moving in position and are stacked up. There is no, there's some observers here on the right hand side, but they're not spotting the Lurkers on the left hand side right now. So a lot of spine hits going down onto these Dragoons for free. Um, finally, best starting to reposition his army in a more tenable position. But if so Sulky might be in a little bit of trouble if he can't keep reinforcing this position quick enough, because eventually uh, best can get more and more units up there and and re reinforce this attack so i think this might be a little bit rough for soki because he hasn't got a, a fifth base on the way he needs to get something done he needs to kill this fourth base of best instead he's going for that now but the rallied units are already there to defend with some storms we'll be able to shut down the efforts of soki and getting that kill so now i think this is a, a very winnable position for best he can keep shutting down these bases in the top left while containing uh, the threat of soki and eventually um whittling him down and securing more bases but the problem is that Soki will soon have uh, to file a tech out with uh, dark swarms and plagues and what have you so this isn't necessarily uh, a win for best just yet and Soki still coming in here now trying to get more pressure on this but I think there's just oh beautiful targets on these high templars critically though might be able to whittle down enough of these critical gas units of um, best here enough to still be in a great position but I think overall this is a really hard game to call yeah the attack over there towards the mineral only of best fails but he buys some time to maybe protect the base in the top left. He's really got to get up there here quickly. He has lurkers in front of his third base or yeah, his center left base, but he needs to uh, move them over here to defend this base quickly. Otherwise, he's going to end up getting shut down. Ling's going to come forward. He tries to uh, clear this and kill this base with just a bunch of Ling's and some Dark Swarm. It's just not going to happen because there's enough storm here to deal with all that. Meanwhile, base in the top left is going to end up going down. Dude, Soul Key is running wow. out of steam here. Yeah, it looks like Bess is doing it. Like, so far, so good. I mean, he's shutting down these bases. Uh, he's tried to take 6 o'clock, but Bess is shutting that down. I think Soul Key was just typing something there. Um, <laughs> I think it was just like maybe telling his stream something or something. I don't know what that was. Uh, um, yeah, it's a very weird uh, state of affairs to, to be in. Um, because I think that best can now just put the squeeze the noose around Sulky's neck. It's been really hard for Sulky to defend the six o'clock base as well. Barely gets the morph on the Archon before the links pick off the High Templar. There does have Dark Swarm to slow this down, but there is maybe enough Zealots to clear out these Lurkers. There's not a, okay, maybe with the additional Lurkers coming in, I think that maybe Sulky can hold in this base, but he could if he wanted to run into this um, six o'clock with his army or push through the Dark Swarm. Oh, with the Storm, though, there's just so much for Sulky to handle. I don't think he's going to be able to save this base at six. I think he's going to lose all his units and the game. Well, unless he's typing in power overwhelming, I don't think he's going to be able to take this fight here effectively <laughs> um best just shoving forward over and over again and trading out here with the archon uh zealot templar army the dragoons are really not doing too much but eventually some of this dark swarm is going to dissipate and the dragoons will come back into the picture the lings are just flooding forward here he's trying so hard to hang on but he's managed to push far enough forward that the uh, dragoons can actually fight wait no more lings managed to make their way in here. Dude, this tug of war wow. is killing me right Crazy. now. It's it's too tense to call. 
Yeah, it's really t really tough to call. I think that just barely best will get the better of him. But Dow Plague's coming out. It, I mean, he will start to shove into the six o'clock pocket. So he's going to use that as a window of opportunity to try and get under the Dark Soul into the wedge between these two armies, split off the army into two little pieces here, and then try and gobble up one section of the army at a time with better positioning. Maybe that could work. But trying to get into the, the six o'clock base with some Dark Swarm and um, uh, Zerkas here, but there's still enough Zealots to clean that forces up. So now uh, drones are starting to die while the other forces of the Protoss are trying to shut out the zergs and now sulky is kind of biting the dust right now he can't really hold on to his vision any lot if he if he had the top left natural already finished up while this was all going on and he was mining up there as well maybe it's an okay position but i don't think he's got that base online right now either yeah i don't think he does either best is about to go and check it with the observer so we're gonna see it for ourselves one last plague goes down but i, I mean things are looking very very desperate right now uh, Bess is just firing on all cylinders here with a huge army moving across the map. Solki, what does he have right now? He does not have top left. The observer spots it. Uh, Bess knows that he's in a great spot right now. Yeah, everything just comes down to the six o'clock base. Solki's got a drone there to expand yet again, but Best has a critical mass here that he should be able to win against Solki's army. Solki's built a big enough force to try and challenge this mineral only base. They're trying to dark swarm down, but there's so many Templars here. He's just gobbling up all of this Zerg army like it's nothing right now. Best is just playing absolutely out of his mind. I didn't expect him to perform this well against Solki, but here we have it. GG finally called by Solki. It's going to be Best going against Light. Wow, that's a great lineup as well. Best versus Light is a great matchup. Jeez, that final push does not work sometimes the dark swarm is just a target for the uh storm of protoss he just throws down storms underneath all of that orange cloud and man that was a crazy crazy game i wonder what would have happened or how the game would have been different had we not had that long period of slowdown however you can't take anything away from Best there. He played fantastically. He handled everything really, really well. It got chaotic with the drops, but he kept his cool, and he shut down the bases of Soul Key effectively. Really, really good game there. All right, it was cool to see the first-person view, but I'm glad we're back here with the Observer to watch this match here. Best versus Light on Troy. Cross map should be fun. Uh, yeah, I'm super looking forward to this. I really do hope that Best doesn't just uh, ape mode light here and shut him down. I would love to see a light versus snow showdown after this, but it is Troy. Cross map, TVP can be a little bit rough for Terrence, and we could be seeing just a, a gateway first or maybe even double gate. Looks like a, a wall in here on the inside, or at least a semi wall in from light. Maybe giving myself more options to defend against any potential early zealot pressure here from Best. Hmm, I wonder if Light's gonna do something really weird here. Like a really fast starport or something, maybe for a drop or something crazy. He is known to do some really weird stuff. Like, I've even yeah. seen him do Wraith against Protoss before, but I mean, that that's just completely out of the, the uh, whack house, you know what I mean? Like, this is just <laughs> totally insane. Oh, yeah, usually. I mean, you can't get away with that kind of build unless you've got like perfect execution and even then it's hard to like make that build work so yeah not usually a build you would see but uh we can't necessarily count light out from builds like that he is capable of all kinds of craziness yeah this wall is throwing me off man what is he gonna do with this generally you want to wall in uh just CC at the top first. of your ramp yeah, the bunker expand. Bunker expand, okay. Yeah, no gas here, so it's definitely going to be a CC. I think this is just completely designed to throw off best, right? He comes in, he sees yeah. the, the wall in here. He's expecting a gas behind this, and it's just going to be a CC out of vision. Um, and then suddenly he's just going to come out and take that base. The Nexus gets thrown down here. One Zealot coming across the map. It can't actually shut down the, the assimilators here or anything like that. It's not going to be uh, able to deal that that damage to like lock light out because he's got the the, the uh, marine here already. But you know, maybe he can put some damage on one of those assimilators. 
Wow, I'm he's not sure what he's going to do. First. He's floating to the island, I think. You think he's going to float to the island? Well, that yeah. would be insane. I think he is. I think he's going to show us something different, so... Well, that would be wild. He's, he's still not building a gas, by the way, guys. No gas. So maybe he goes float to the island and then <laughs> goes and takes another base? Is that what we're going to see? Surely not, I mean... <laughs> You would need like two bunkers on the high ground. I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know. It seems I, a little bit crazy. There, to me. There's still no gas. Like, what are we looking yeah, at right there's now? Still no gas. It might actually be that. How insane would that be if he makes three command centers? I'm gonna go nuts. <laughs> well, I think he is. I mean, wow. I think he is. Oh no. Oh, 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 oh. There's got to oh. be another CC about to pop down. It's got to be. Yeah, here goes to the island. Triple Is he going to make an location as well? Oh, he's going to block the Zealot out. Nicely done. Nicely done. Wow. Oh my god. Oh, he's doing it. The madman is doing it. Look at this handsome nerd right now, figuring out new ways, innovative ways of approaching these maps and this game. I'm all about it. And best oh. thinking cannon, thinking about the bio counter pressure because he saw how late the natural expansion was. He's not expecting this play at all out of like, neither are we. This is so out of pocket that this isn't in best calculation at all right now. He's trying to catch the the probe here with the marines try to fake him out even further i think Bess will finally realize what's happening but is he really gonna expect the the double cc does he really expect there must be oh yeah there must be an island is that really what you're thinking right now <laughs> i mean you're certainly not thinking that light's doing what he's doing right now no that's like the last thing that will cross your mind he might eventually figure this out the longer the game goes on and be like oh he did that but it'll be some time before he fully identifies it. Yeah, he's got to be wondering, like, what is there going to be a vulture drop or something behind this? There's got to be some sort of pressure coming. But it's just nothing. It's just going to be a bunch of factories thrown down now. And off of three base, he's going to have just an insane amount of production, an insane amount of economy here when he really shouldn't be able to kind of a wild approach to Troy and it's funny that yeah. we're only seeing this now when Troy is just about out of the map pool but light finding a new way to play on it this late in the game it's pretty cool no I'm, I'm super stoked about it honestly like it's just interesting like I, I love people approaching the maps in different ways and I, I don't like people feeling like you have to play the game in a certain way like obviously the meta is the meta for a reason but you don't want to get too stale as well you don't want to stagnate in your your wheelhouse of play you know and the the meta itself is like a, a carousel it keeps going around in a big circle anyway so you need to keep adapting to it yourself so i love to see this kind of stuff and it looks like light is kind of geared up for everything right now and with, with the, the commitment to cannons early on from best it slowed him down enough that relatively speaking light is looking phenomenal right now well, I admittedly hate on maps like this, like Troy, um, very often times, but it is super, super cool to see new strategies like this, and it, it is understandable why uh, pro leagues like the, uh, the ASL and KCM want to have some crazy maps in there because we do get games like this. We do have opportunities for a wildness like this and interesting builds like this. And like you said, to uh, break up the meta and try new things is... Uh, part of the joys of playing StarCraft and Light here, he's just setting up so nicely with a ton of turrets. He has so much income to work with. He can set up an insane amount of defense here to where Bess is probably not going to be able to do anything to him. He's flying in finally with the Observer and he's going to see this extra base down here. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be like, hang on a minute. Why is there a turret there? The scoot around a little bit. This is wild. Like, honestly, like, Best is probably, like, going to be scratching his ape head, wondering what is going on. Did I really just let this happen? Yeah, he's got his own third base on the way right now, but 
Look at how long this uh, third of light has been running. All the SCVs at that base on the low ground have been built at that CC. <laughs> There's like a full saturation already. Yeah, which means he knows it's been there for a long time. You know what I mean? He, he knows there's no dropship. Like, there'd be a vulture drop or something if there was a dropship in play. So he, he he's very, very like, what is going on? Like, he, he must um, be able to figure out roughly what happened, that he did a super crazy fast CC first. Oh, he's going to do double observer into the main because one's going to die to the turret, so he's tanking the shots, and he's going to run away that observer and see if he can get this one in without losing both. Uh, oh! Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at Best with his little gorilla brain there, showing us that he's got his thinking cap on from Futurama, and he's a very smart ape indeed. That was uh, pretty sneaky there. Best managing to get into the main. He does have the scan to deal with the observer there, but all the factories were revealed. That is so many factories. At eight minutes, yeah. we've got... Just an insane factory count here. He's going to have so many units in a moment. How is Best going to be able to handle this? He's double expanding. He's got the expansion over at the left side. I know he's got to stay ahead in expansions right now, but he is about to get hit with a massive army. This is exactly what Light wants. He wants Best to kind of be a little bit greedy and try and like claw his way back into the curve of the game, but that's just going to set Light up for an even stronger push timing, and that's exactly what we're going to see. Yeah, he's catching up in supply right now. Pumping out waves of tanks and vultures and goliaths. And Bess is going to put together his a normal force here of shuttles and zealots and dragoons. Let's just see if he's got what it takes to slam the square peg through the round hole this time. It's going to take a lot of ape strength to get it done. I mean, he's definitely got the strength out of all the Protoss players to do that kind of stuff, but yeah, this is looking wild. I'm not sure if this is the time where it's going to work. You know what I mean? This is a very small hole that um, Light has created for him to try and get through. So I don't know how he's going to get through. Arbiter play from Best is going to be the answer, and he's, I think, picking up a probe to drop over at the the, the um, island okay i don't think he dropped it there he's gonna drop it at 12 instead which is interesting i guess he's well, it does, make that the island as well it kind of makes sense in the sense you're, you're kind of setting yourself up for like having this island as a more free base later on it might even make more sense to take the like the the top right island base but you then run the risk of like things from the high ground hitting you so he does take you up <laughs> oh, okay that's funny. I was thinking that might be it. Yeah. yeah, interesting. He's going to take that. And a, a recall is likely to come around here into the main base. It's not very typical to see recall um, into the main these days, but maybe it'll end up working out for best in this kind of wacky situation we find ourselves in. Uh, at the same time, though, Light is shoving towards this natural and getting very, very close here. He's killing one uh, assimilator just to make sure that the army can't get through. Okay, he's going to kill his own assimilators back at home. I think this is what we're going to see. He's going to kill one of his own assimilators back at home. He's going to recall everything into the main, and there's not going to be anywhere for Light to attack into. This is going to be insane. This is really, really weird um, thought out play from Best here, but I'm not sure if it's still going to work, but hey, I think it's really creative. Like, we've seen like two really creative approaches to this map in this game already, and I'm all about it saying this is the kind of StarCraft that I love to see. Yeah, this is wild. I guess we don't have energy just yet. Yeah, not quite enough energy just yet. And will he go for the third or is he going to actually just dive on into the main? I think he might just go for the third here. What do you think, Shin? Uh, yeah, I think that's a possibility. I think, uh, I, I, honestly, though, I think, like, it's more, it makes more sense to just recall onto the factories here. Oh, right on top of the tank, and he could go for the assimilator. Oh, man, this is crazy. He's going to go right for the assimilator and lock all these factories in. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Best is wild. Best is outplaying. Like we we just saw Light make such an amazing move here in the early this game and completely mind game Best, and now Best has turned it completely around and is utilizing these 
assimilator so perfectly. He's going to kill everything in the main. He's the Einstein of apes. Like, what is going on in this game right now, Saiyan? Completely locking out the turn from his main base and now getting top of the production line. He needs to make sure he can keep killing these units effectively so he can, like, actually kill off some of the factories. But even just trading off the units in the main base for quite a substantial amount of time will be annoying in and of itself. I think eventually he'll stabilize. It's a shame he has none of an arbiter to just recall another bunch of units into the main base. But, yeah, I think Light will stabilize, but he has lost a bit, quite a bit of supply trading off these units slowly but surely and now we're gonna have a situation where light has to airlift his army out of his main base to try and get out on the map <laughs> this is going to be a nightmare for him now a uh, single arbiter moving through the middle of the map he's trying to find a path that's not been covered here by mines and other units of light but light spots that with the scv there in the center left can this arbiter make it through over here into the main base once again army is looking for a place to attack but there's just no area to attack right now he, he just doesn't have any options here of where to go with this army those dragoons are of course going to get splattered but then what where is he going to go with this we have another recall into the main base saying there's a few tanks already sieged up but we can recall on top of those siege tanks so this could, could get real wild real quick and there's a lot of zealots in this oh my days like usually you'd want to quite a, a dragoon heavy recall but it's actually not too bad in this current situation i mean just like four dragoons and the rest pure zealot just wreaking havoc in the main base absolutely wild game state that we seem to find ourselves in we, i don't think we have any kind of carrier transitions or anything like that occurring but it doesn't really matter as long as we can keep getting the recalls off in the main and cutting off the the head of the snake here and doing a lot of killing the infrastructure eventually maybe killing some of these uh, armories and supply depots all kinds of stuff can uh, occur to the point where we get into a game winning state without even to, having to engage this army out on the map 170 is applied to 107 right now saying this ape is insane yeah. is it time to just I, I i feel like we just float the factories into the middle of the map and start making units out there but instead he's gonna try to like airlift stuff back into the main to keep stuff alive but uh, like i guess losing all of the supply depots here is, is too much you can't afford to lose all of that um but he's lost every factory at this point only two is still standing oh no four actually a lot of them burning down though right now and he's gonna have another recall soon this arbit has been alive for too long well, it's just I, I, i'm honestly quite speechless about this that best has like managed to outplay light in such a very strong fashion like this isn't this isn't like a small kind of mind game here this is like really advanced level play stuff here from best really understanding both the game state and the map and how best to abuse it and that even while being quite sufficiently behind in the game with that huge early economic lead from like going for a triple cc play it's beautiful the way that best has managed to bring this back and i think the only thing that would be uh, would make sense right now actually from best would be uh, if he just switched into carrier right now, I think that would be the perfect way to finish this game off. I, I don't see the transition just yet. He's actually not mining gas at a lot of his bases, so he can't really afford it right now. But uh, I really do feel like that would be the, the killing blow here. There's no way that Light can attack in any of these bases right now. And we, we just have so many islands to, to fight from. Why not go into carrier and just take this game easily? Yeah, and, and Best is going to go around and lock out all these other bases as well, so they'll only be accessible by air, and uh, Delos can still squeeze through if it's uh, only one guy has been killed as well, so still has use of these Zealots in these pocket bases for the time being until the other assimilators kill. Was he kill both of them there? Wow. I guess so. Now you can't even transfer SCVs. Yeah. This is really rough for Light going forward here. I mean, he's going to try and come out onto the center of the board yet again, but it's really hard for him to get something done. He has got three dropships available to him to start, like, you know, cycling units over the walls of these assimilators to start laying siege to these bases and, like, playing whack-a-mole with the expansions of Best right now. But the one thing going bad for Best is that it took a little bit of time for him to start mining these additional gases. So he hasn't got a lot of gas available to him, but he has got a lot of Zealots. So Light can utilize Vultures out on the map to kind of, like, raid against the Zealot armies and try and get some damage done but dark templars are also being made uh, to try and slow down the advancement of these pushes so it will be a little bit tricky for uh, light to get cost of, uh, effectiveness in four shuttles saying gonna be coming to defend here yeah these four shuttles are gonna bring enough oomph here to the army 
uh, to likely take down all of these tanks and clear all of this army. Light dropping near 100 supplies. He's actually going to pick up a lot of this army and just kind of drop back on the other side to try and take a better trade here. But the tank count has just been lowered so drastically and Bez is just going to load up another army group here and the advancing forces of light are smaller and smaller whereas Bess is getting larger and larger a 80 supply advantage now it's just growing and growing here and another recall is likely to come into the main now yeah, it's so brutal as well he's not even got like a critical amount of factories to pump units from as well like everything is just really not looking good for like even got the cannons on the high ground at these assimilators make it difficult to come in here with the drop ships and like lay siege to the the island base from the high ground as well there's not really a lot of vectors of attack left open for light to exploit anymore as well so right now this is looking better and better for best the, the longer that this game goes on is now mined out in the main base so it has a big fleet of shells to come and scoop up all those probes you don't see that every day but it's nice to see little uh, refugee protoss style going on here on this map here but it's all the bases being locked out from normal unit traversal yeah it's gonna load all those up drop here on some of these islands start to suck up those minerals although he's already got a 4k bank and max supply might as well start sucking up some more minerals here and make sure that you have even more bank to work with uh, should the the worst come to pass like he's not got full vision of what Terran has right now. He doesn't uh, know what we know that he has like an 80 supply advantage. It could be a little bit tighter than that. So he's just making sure that he can win this game and he will be transitioning finally into carrier. This is what I was looking for. It's the perfect option when everything is an island to just go for carriers in the late game. Here comes the recall into the island expansion as well to shut out some mining there and really limit the resources available to light to get maxed out to deal with those carriers and it is a really good insurance policy in the late game getting those carriers and going double core as well to get upgrades on both the armor and weapons of those to make sure they can still trade cost efficiently because light does have pretty good upgrades so you don't want to just tickle his units to death you want to make sure you can actually get some good trades there light finally going to be taking out this 12 o'clock it looks like uh, has also scouted this island being taken but i don't think he's got the forces to bear to both defend against this big poor man recall of shuttles that are going to be scooping up these units and continuing the assault in the main base while also having to have the units available to him to keep links siege to these bases so it looks like um light's gonna eventually get squeezed out this game big beautiful mine hits though going off and with the goliath's target firing down some of those shells does lock out a lot of the potential of this but the drop in the bottom right though so pretty much best case scenario for the drop as he also lays siege to this um island base of uh, uh best um, inversely but some shells are going to be trying to dive onto that to clean this up well, that first trade went about as well as you could possibly hope here as light. I mean, he killed a lot of probes. He denied some bases. He's still flying around here with the dropships. Maybe he can find a small area uh, where cannons can't hit and zealots aren't present that he can actually hit, uh, you know, kill some more uh, army, some more probes. It's a nice last dish effort here for. Uh, light but it is that just that a last ditch effort he's got almost no mining here left over his natural is just about to run out of minerals and he cannot take any more bases right now everything's been locked out for him he might try to come up to the top right and take the natural but that's really the only accessible base by ground right now yeah, the only thing really going bad for Bess is that he's like slow in like setting up his gas mining like he has taken some time for getting his probes onto gas he just now started mining gas in top right and at nine o'clock so we'll be churning out a little bit of extra gas that he needs to keep pumping out carriers and the other gas heavy units that he needs to finish out this game has got a pretty strong insurance policy four stargates available to him so he can produce up to four carriers at a time so far they're only producing two so it won't be having a critical mass of a, a carrier fleet to win the game anytime soon but eventually he will have those carriers become more relevant. Recall going to be going off at 3 o'clock here. Only a small pocket of goons, but it should be just enough to clear out these goliaths here and also maybe get the cancel or the float on this uh, CC. Yeah, unfortunately, goliaths, they really do not do well against these dragoons. And although we've got this little push here, it's a cute little push over into the top right. He's trying to deal some damage to the uh, nexus over here. There's just so many nexi around the map that are 
uh, mining happily here for best. Even if he managed to kill this, and it's unlikely that he'll be able to take that down, he still wouldn't be in a great position. The Arbiter is going to finish off the command center here. That's something you don't see every day. But he does finish that off. Yeah, only 10 damage, half of the damage of the Dragoons on that Arbiter. So usually he doesn't get that many kills. Uh, there's like more units coming over by a shuttle to reinforce this position in the top right. I guess there's a singular D-Matrix tank going to be shutting that down. A lone science vessel trying to make its exit. But this is looking pretty dire here. Pretty much all the resources for light have been dried up. And it's going to be very difficult for him to get a third base online on challenge. We have 6 o'clock being the, the base of choice now for light trying to shuttle down some units into this position position here trying to set up some kind of uh ability to mine here he had a zealot underneath that cc blocking it from landing for some time has another recall available to just come straight down into the six o'clock as soon as a, a window becomes available here yeah here we go gonna get that recall off and that's a lot of zealots to deal with just pure goliath is not gonna cut it here and you can see he tries to target down that Arbiter. It's just not going to be enough. Some more shuttles come through as well. Max supply here for best. And Light is barely able to keep 100. Uh, carriers are the follow-up that will just not be beaten here. Light is struggling against just a few Zealots. Carriers are going to absolutely crush. Just moments away from a tap out here, I feel, though the, the money is getting low here for best. It's just there's really no hope left for light at this point. Well, I mean, if there was some way he could get all these units on top of the carriers before they got their interceptors finished, maybe there'd be some way he could win if he could get all these units into the main base and start killing. It was killing the shuttles. If he can get in there and pincer these carriers with these units, not a lot of interceptors have been produced just yet. Maybe there's a tiny, tiny window where he can get on top of these carriers, but I don't think he's even identified that as an opportunity here. So I think that it will be a more of a passive game state of cycling his units around the map and eventually just bleeding himself dry here. Yeah, he's got no place to mine. Um, the carriers are going to come out and start to clear things. Uh, stop Light from taking any positions here. He does throw down a, an EMP, funnily enough, on these cannons. So they will die very, very fast. He drops right on top of all of this. And he's trying to take this fight. But there's just too many zealots. And the carriers have yet to join this. A good final hurrah here for Light, honestly. But... There it is, the carriers coming forward here. Gonna start to snipe tanks, snipe Goliaths, and clear this uh, top right-hand area. There it is, GG. Wow, some great innovative play from both sides in this game. Really fantastic. Gets the clapper from KCM very enthusiastically. Excellent, excellent final game here in our first week. Well, guys, there you have it. The final match there, definitely the the gem of the night. But there were so many great diamonds there. So many excellent, excellent games this week. Um, where do you even start, Shun? <laughs> you're kind of spoiled for choice some, some of these weeks just get better you know they like age like fine wine like you think you're getting a good week and then like you see the rest of the sets you're like ooh. um I, i'm really kind of blown away by what happened in the finale though like it was really special to see such innovative play from both sides the opening from light going triple command center with used like utilizing the island um and best navigating his way into probably the only strategic advantage that he could muster which was that refugee style of just sacrificing the natural closing out all the other entrances and yeah just really beautiful stuff like beautiful starcraft and a great way of like saying goodbye to some of these maps which will be cycled out eventually as the we usher in the new era of balance and maps to the scene yeah excited for those new maps guys those are going to be coming up in future weeks I've got to go and put together an intro for this week. I've completely forgotten about putting that together. So I'm going to throw that together quickly and get this video out to you. Shun, thank you so much for being here, man. It's pleasure. always a pleasure. And guys, we will see you next week. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Thanks, guys.